And everyone, good to have you with us. The night is beautiful and as picturesque as Frank just described. And I do expect a darn good football game tonight. The Buccaneers record at 0-3, utterly misleading. They outplayed the Vikings all over the place, did the same with the Cowboys, lost both. The only game they really should have lost was in a monsoon right here in Tampa to the Washington Redskins. For more details on the people, here is the Gipper. Thank you, Howard. And while Tampa is not out of the running for the playoffs. If they lose tonight, they very well could be. However, Howard pointed out one thing. There's two games they definitely should have won. They overwhelmed the Dallas Cowboys last Sunday. Nevertheless, they lost. But they picked a tough team to get started with, the Miami Dolphins. They don't make mistakes. They're well coached by Don Shula. Good, solid defensive play, and they have the luxury of two fine quarterbacks. You saw David Woodley. Well, they have the best backup quarterback, perhaps, in all of football. Don Strock and Shula does not hesitate to go to Strock, as he did in the second half of the win over Buffalo last week. So it's a matchup between the state rivals, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and the Miami Dolphins. And for Tampa Bay, if they're going to win tonight, they need a big showing from a young man who has not performed all that well on national television. I'm talking about their quarterback, Doug Williams. Earlier, Don Meredith was on the sidelines and had a visit with Doug. Doug, you've been in the league for five years, quarterback in the league for five years. Your team this year has lost three games, and they've really been close, and a lot of people say you could have gone any way. And as you know, you only win when you win. That quarterback's a great place to be. When you lose, they seem to look at you and say, hey, Doug, what happened? I, I was wondering if maybe one of the things that might happen is the fact that do you, would you feel more comfortable if you were calling your own plays? I think at a certain time, uh, Don, you know, I'm in a position where I feel like I know what's going to work in certain situations the play come in from the sideline you're a little disappointed that it might not be the play that you had in mind mm -hmm. and you know if you change the play and it don't work you know you got to come to the sideline and, and answer why I change it you know what I had you know he can all get the time that the play he called might have worked well it's always those ifs and buts sort of thing we're talking about you know Doug here you guys really do have a good football team this is the last year in your contract would you consider leaving Tampa well you know uh, Don you know with the strike uh, lasting eight weeks uh, I I think what happened was the fact that they made it out of an economic track. Yeah. And I got to look at it from the economic standpoint of, you know, if a good offer came along to another league, I, I think I'd be crazy not to consider. And the economics are better if you win tonight, right? Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> good luck to you. Okay, Don. <laughs> That was earlier, and they were talking economics. Now they're talking football, and the Miami Dolphins will receive to your left, set to kick off. Bill Capice and deep for the Dolphins. Number 41, Fulton Walker, a speedster. Last year, he returned one against Buffalo, 90 yards for a touchdown. He can make it. Walker from the five-yard line. Runs into his own man at the 20th flag is down. And now it's picked up. There is no flag as Walker gets out over the 20-yard line to just about the 23-yard line, where it'll be first down and 10. And now there is a discussion. Flag went down and then was picked off. And as you can see, offsides indicated against Tampa Bay. We would suspect that Miami would like to run it back again. Discussion on the field at the moment. That's David Whitley moving to the bench, so we Offside, anticipate number another kick. kicking team. Re-kick with a five-yard penalty. That means they'll be kicking from the 30-yard line. Fulton Walker should have a better opportunity. Quickly again, Tampa Bay, 0-3 on the season. They lost to Miami. They lost to Washington. They lost to Dallas, 14-9, although they beat them totally in statistical information. They five times they were inside the 10-yard line against the Dallas Cowboys was the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but all they got out of it were three field goals. That doesn't win football games. Not unless you kick a whole bunch out. You have a whole bunch of those things out there. You can do it. Three, 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 three. I can figure that out. Bill Capice is the guy that's taking a little bit of heat down here in, in uh, Tampa area, not only by the fans of the press, but by the coaching staff, because they're saying if Capice had not missed a 24-yard field goal attempt in Dallas, it would have put them in a totally different situation where they would have had to try to go for that touchdown in the closing minutes of that game. We are set to go once again. There is a look at Fulton Walker. Lots of speed. Sixth round pack pick a year ago out of West Virginia, and Capice gets it in the air once again. He doesn't kick it long, hangs it high, however, and it'll be Walker from the 10-yard line. Good defensive play, and Miami picks up a yard on the penalty as they'll mark it out of the 24-yard line. David Whitley comes on. His numbers for three games, as you can see, passing at a little over 57% last week in the first half, however, in a nine 
9-7 win over Buffalo. He was 6 of 16 for 79 yards. Don Shula made the change to Don Strzok, who wasn't all that much better in the second half, but the Dolphins defeated Buffalo, and they are, along with Washington, the only two undefeated teams in the NFL. Set to go now. The setback's Andre Franklin, number 37. Fine, second-year man out of Nebraska. And Tony Nathan, this will be Franklin. Pulling ahead is Franklin. Up over the 25 to about the 23, a gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. Let's take a look at that defense. Keep your eye on Leroy Selman. He's playing as he did as a fresh, freshman, a rookie first-round draft pick. Hugh Green, great name from the collegiate ranks, out of one linebacker. Good secondary, Howard. They just don't make mistakes. Nobody makes mistakes until they make them. Now, that's profound. That, I understand that's profound. profound. We can just develop that as the day goes and that goes along. I think we'll watch and see them. All right. Second down and seven. Whitley back. Fires. It's complete. Out of the backfield is Tony Nathan. He gets up short of a first down to about the 32 or 33 yard line. Tony Nathan, fine receiver, can do a lot of things. Appears to be hurt. And there, he right? is shaken up on the play. Now, Don, this team has a jarring defense. The statistics are utterly misleading in the sense that when I say statistics, I mean the 0-3 record. This is a good football team. And if they win tonight under the new system in the shortened season, they have a chance to get back in there. They made the playoffs a year ago. Nathan, as you can see, I believe, just sort of twisted his leg under the weight of that tackle, and he did get the yardage for the first down. We'll check on Nathan's condition as Tommy Vigorito, a second-year man out of Virginia, steps in to Nathan's shoes, along with Andre Franklin. Tommy Vigorito, a lot like Tony Nathan. Good receiver out of the backfield, perhaps not the talented runner that Tony Nathan is. The first down is at the 34-yard line of the Miami Dolphins. It'll be second down and ten. Woodley knows that you don't really get that opportunity that often during the course of the night. He had plenty of time to throw, and Harris had made a good cut. It was wide open across the middle, and Woodley just overthrew that. Daryl Harris has turned into a superb receiver for Miami. Not great speed, but enough speed to get deep. Very acrobatic, much in the mold of the Lynn Swan type receiver. You put it in his area, he'll come down with it. Second down and ten. Vigorito. And Vigorito out of the 35. Good defensive surge in there. Dave Logan. Leroy Selman closing down. Dave Logan, the nose tackle for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Playing fine football, leading the team. Tied with Dave Stalls in sacks. Three and a half. I don't know whether this is a verification of Logan's statement. He says some people are born virtuosos to play pianos and guitars. He says, I was born to play nose tackle. <laughs> That's too bad. Third down and nine. Teams both adjusting. Four man down front for the Buccaneers. Third wide receiver. And Whitley fires over the middle. It is taken by Vigorito. Far short of the first down as he gets to the 41-yard line. Cedric Brown up there. Killing the Dolphins' chance for a first down. And out comes the punting unit. Tom Morris will be punting for Miami. John Holt has dropped for Tampa Bay. There's John Holt, fourth round draft pick a year ago out of West Texas State. He too a speedster. in his second year from Ohio State. Oros did not have any pressure, had a lot of time, not a good kick, however. Does take a bit of a Miami bounce and continues to roll until it's down close to the 17-yard line. So Oros picks up good yardage off not one of your finest kicks you're going to see. And Tampa Bay has their first possession. They'll begin near their 17-yard line. Now, from Buick and your participating Buick dealer, a remarkable opportunity. Right now, you can... Florida, and if there will be additional no-shows tonight, you couldn't tell it from the crowd. It's sold out. 
72,000 it seats. And they look like they've all turned out. First and 10 for the Buccaneers. Doug Williams looks it over. The ball at the 16-yard line of Tampa Bay. Owens, the tailback. Gets about a yard, and that is it. As Owens is taken. Getting there. First was Ernie Roan. It'll be second down. And just about eight. Offensively, Doug Williams, of course, the big quarterback with the strong arm, learning the feel, learning the touch. The tailback, James Owens, James Wilder, Jerry Eckwood, the fine running back from a year ago, you might recall, out for the season with a back injury. There is the offensive unit, change at center. Steve Wilson with a bad ankle could not go, so Jim Leonard will be taking on Bob Baumauer, the nose tackle for Miami tonight. Second down and eight. Harbor is in motion. Williams, slow drop. To Wilder. Leading rusher and leading receiver. He's upended, and it was Don McNeil making the stop after a gain of about a yard, a yard and a half. It'll be third down and seven. Defensively, let's take a look at the Dolphins. They changed considerably. They are down to four defensive linemen, however. They've lost Doug Betters with a broken thumb from last week's game against Buffalo. Fine linebacking, and A.J. Dewey, after a couple of years, has really adjusted to that linebacking position. He'll drop in the coverage, and he'll come on the blitz. And of course, you recall, he came up, A.J. Dewey, as a defensive lineman. Third down and seven. Wilder is the single setback. Williams has plenty of time. Gets the ball off, incomplete, in and out of the hands of Wilder. And Tampa Bay will be forced to punt. One of those passes that you want to know that maybe if he'd gone for two hands, could he have caught it? At the same time, if the quarterback had thrown it maybe a half step a little bit more behind him. And then right on money, he picks up a first down. I think it's going to be interesting to watch the Blackwood brothers, uh, Glenn and Lyle, who free safety and strong safety for the Miami Dolphins tonight. They don't have great speed. They're great hitters. You might see Williams go into that area. Larry Spider will punt. Tommy Vigorito, a dangerous return man, is stationed at his own 36-yard line. Spider hangs it up, drives Vigorito back inside his own 30, near the 25. Trying to get behind the picket line, and Vigorito does not do so. Good punt, but Vigorito cannot return. He gets to the 28-yard line. It'll be first and 10 Miami. Excellent coverage by Tampa Bay. Vigorito, renowned now as a special duty man. Excellent kick runner, but he had no place to go then. We'll be back in a moment. live and work around the water. Tampa Bay and Miami, who had a great opportunity for good field position, settles for the ball, first and ten at their own 28-yard line. Ronnie Lee, the tight end for the Miami Dolphins, we understand, is being taken into the locker room for x-rays on a bruised hip. And back in the ball game is Tony Nathan, number 22. David Whitney looks it over. Cephalo in motion. the 38-yard line, 37. Short of the first down by about a yard, Neil Colsey upending Franklin. As we look at Franklin again, Don, his development's been very interesting. He came here on the Herald that David o Overstreet, a high draft choice, went to Canada, and he has grown into not just a respectable ball player, but now the man who gets the tough yardage. They look at you, they haven't really had a back like that since Zonka, and at Nebraska, you're right, he was basically inside those tackles, and that's where they keep him right now, but a very strong runner. Second down, less than a yard for the first down. Vigorito, and Vigorito oh, finds yeah. another opening on the right side. He's up close to midfield, upended by Cedric Brown, picking up the Dolphin first down, and the Dolphin offensive line working well against Tampa Bay. Loxo over the right side, along with Ed Newman, opening the hole for Vigorito. You just spotted at 34, Cedric Brown. That was the second ta tackle of this still young game. Came along remarkably, called the most underrated and underpublicized and undervalued Buck. Had seven interceptions in the final six games for the Bucks last year. Really fine play. First and ten, Cephalo in motion for Miami. Franklin uh -huh. picked up and falls forward for a gain of two, giving three. It'll be second down at seven. And a change defense. 
defensively for Tampa Bay. Dave Stalls, who we were told before the game had a very sore back, has left the game. Booker Reese, a rookie out of Bethune Cookman, is in there, number 66. Second round draft choice, huge potential as Tony Nathan injured earlier, working on the hip. Ice. Received a little criticism for trading away a draft choice to get Booker Reese down here. McKay standing by that decision. He thinks Booker is number one, number one draft choice. Second down and seven. Whitley. Let's score his back out of the backfield and down he goes. And Dave Logan gets his fourth sack of the young season. David Whitley looking for Vigorito out of the backfield and Logan reigned all over him. What a player he's become. A 12th round draft choice from the University of Pittsburgh. Totally unheralded. He has become possibly one of the three most solid ball players on that club. Nice to have a guy like that that sits in there alongside Selvin, who's been the leading sack producer for this Buccaneer defense since he has been here. But, you know, they used to have a lot of USC players now. They've now switched over to Pittsburgh. And Logan is just a good example of what they've done. The Pitt Panthers are helping the Bucks go. Third down, 15, 44-yard line from the shotgun. Woodley waits for the receiver, fires it complete. And, of course... Vigorito was there, but Hugh Green was there. taken there quickly by Hugh Green, far short of the first down. As a matter of fact, taken at the line of scrimmage, it'll be a putting situation for the Dolphins. Hugh Green is simply a remarkable athlete. He is everywhere, and he hits everywhere, and he has unassisted tackle after unassisted tackle. In New York, the big publicity goes to Lawrence Taylor, who deserves it. But Hugh Green, who came up at the same time, is of the same quality, believe me. Horace on to punt for Miami. John Holt, you had a glimpse of a moment ago. Number 21 back there with T-Bell, former Pittsburgh Steeler. Joined the Bucks a year ago, and T-Bell calls for the fair catch and executes at the 19-yard line where Tampa Bay will have their second possession of the night. Doug Williams, fully aware of what is on the line, perhaps a season, this abbreviated season of nine games, and they have already lost their first three. We'll be back. NFL Classics, presented by Advanced Formula Stress Tabs. The 1972 football season belongs forever to the Miami Dolphins. They were an electric mix of fantasy football come true. Of sweeps and leaps, zones, groans, courage and pain. Rookies, vets, names, no names, rushes, passes, catches, coaches, playoffs, payoffs, perfect. Champions. The Dolphins in 72. Twice the Bucks have won the Central Division of the NFC, and of course a remarkable record of USC. Five Rose Bowls, nine Pac-8 titles, all compiled over a 16-year period. Man of humor also. First and ten, the ball just inside the 20-yard line for the Bucks, resting at the 19. Williams quickly fires out incomplete. Had to have a hitch in the get-along for that one. He says, that one's mine. Come on back. Let's do it again, guys. Something we talked about in the opening. Tampa Bay very effective in all their games, but look at those turnovers. That's the point. That can be a misleading statistic. Total yardage gained, and yet the league uses it official, uh, officially as a measurement of effective offense. It's like time of possession. It's not what you do. It's not how long you have the football. It's what you do with it. Same thing is true in terms of yardage. Second down and ten. Giles in motion, the handoff is Owens, and the tailback tries to cut back inside, and he finds a little opening, and gets out close to a first down before Bill Barnett was there defensively in pursuit. Just about a half a yard short of the first down is Owens. Ran that beautifully, Don. Appeared to be stopped and somehow forced the yardage. Slipped away. Yeah, Barnett made a good tackle, but unfortunately he got him from the back, and his momentum and his body weight carried him forward another three yards. Barnett's guy, as we mentioned, has not been a, a familiar name to us when we look at the Dolphins, but big, fine-looking young athlete. Great mobility. Being a lot of duty tonight. We mentioned earlier that Doug Betters will not play tonight. Broken thumb has a couple of pins in it. Barnett will see a lot of action tonight. Third down, less than a yard. Nobody there. Now that had to be a missed pattern. 
by somebody. Giles, however, Johnny on the spot gets the first down out close to the 34-yard line. Bob Brzezinski was there defensively for Miami. Either that or it was terrific defensive coverage on it. A uh, short yardage situation, and it's just one of those deals where they either didn't make a real good play fake in the backfield. Let's take a look at it again. Well, I based it down on the fact that three of them looked like they were having a card game out there, and I mean, they were all bucks. Yeah. And Giles, I believe, really was like the third receiver on that. He's the guy, if nobody else is open, let's throw it to Giles, let him pick up a first, and that's what they did. In any event, the first down at the 32-yard line. Beautiful stadium on a beautiful night here in Florida. Frank Gifford, Howard Cosell, Don Meredith. The Bucks and the Dolphins. The toss. Michael Morton, the rookie oh. from the University of Nevada at Las Vegas, taken by Larry Gordon, one of the fine under-heralded linebackers in football. That's the point you have to emphasize about the Dolphins. They can play the 3-4 with such effectiveness because of the greatness of their linebackers. Taylor made for the 3-4. Brzezinski, Dewey, Ronan Gordon. And there is Larry. Three of them superb on the blitz. Roan used more sparingly in that regard. And Dewey and Brzezinski. setback for Tampa Bay. Second down at about nine. Williams fires a shot. It's complete. Tom Morton and the rookie from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Out of the 35 to the 37. A gain of about three. It'll be third down at five. The interesting thing about Williams and his development has, his, has been his transition from insistently throwing the big bomb to now in the more disciplined kind of short route attack that you're seeing. I think, you know, how you, you hear people say how long it takes to be a quarterback in the National Football League. A lot of people put that five years because that's when you really become a quarterback. Well, Doug came in and he's been playing for five years and he hadn't learned the hard way. He took a lot of licks along the way, too. Third down, just about five yards for the first down. Williams, a lot of time, and man should be open, and Giles is there. Oh, yeah. Jimmy Giles, a tight end who really can play it like a flanker, gets the first down down around the 31-yard line. And and just, they may be bringing it back. There's a flag down at the 40-yard line. I don't know. Mike Kozlowski was the guy that they had in there on that kind of a pre-bent defense or a pass defense. Giles had him turned to the inside, got to the outside. The ball was laid in there perfectly, and I believe it is against Miami. Crowd will tell you, and it is against Miami. Jimmy Giles Number 40, with his 12th reception. Defense. And there you see the perfect combination. He turned to the long ball after the short stuff, and Jimmy Giles, a super tight end, just a super player, pro bowl. Mike Kozlowski, the defensive foul for Miami. First down, Tampa Bay, 31-yard line. Rapidly moving first quarter, 316 remaining to go. Still no score. Daryl Carter, 87, one wide receiver now, along with Gordon Jones, number 84. Wilder, spinning and twisting, looking for an opening. He finds none, bouncing off the defensive right side into the arms of Larry Gordon. There he is, the great man. No other way to describe him. The years have established that, yes, he is one of the great coaches of all time in professional football. You know, Howard, I think the most impressive stat, and there are pages of him in the Miami yearbook, is the fact that now in his 20th year, he's only had one losing season. And it has not been all that easy. We watch James Owens on second down and eight get inside the 25-yard line, short of the first down, down close to the 23-yard line. Frank, did you see Wilder lead in the block? The young man from Missouri has really become an outstanding player, almost unnoticeably. Well, at Missouri wasn't. He's the all-time career rushing leader there at Missouri, and they brought him in down here. And, you know, you never know when you get a kid out of college. They say, well, he's not big enough, or he doesn't have that 4-4 speed or whatever it is. He seems to be fitting in quite well here. Third down and two. Ball marked inside the 23-yard line. Kevin House, the speeds are in motion. Williams, third and two, puts it in the air. Oh, yeah. Wilder. Oh. And Wilder has the first down. Uh, a 
at the 16-yard line. Wilder can do it all. Frank, that looks like such an easy pass. I really think that may be one of the most difficult passes to throw because of the angle. The quarterback drops back. You got Wilder out on kind of a flare pass. Maybe we'll take a look at it again, but it has to be thrown just right for it to really pick up in the yardage. The back can't break speed. Can't break his stride. That ball was right on the money. Picked it up. Picked it up a first down. And now you see the importance of the graphic we showed you just seconds ago. That problem, getting it into the end zone. I had a word with Doug about that. I'll talk about it after this play. He has a theory why they don't score down there. Makes some sense. Dial's in motion. Owens picked up. Gets inside the 15-yard line for a couple of yards. A.J. Dewey defensively there. Well, what's his theory? I'd it, like it, to hear it. Right, he's got the theory. It, Why can't he change it? Right, it's not necessarily a new one, but what he says is that their, their basic pass offense, this is I'm talking about Doug Williams saying, their basic offense doesn't really allow itself for those quick-breaking patterns. He says, we need more room to run our pass patterns, and our running game is not strong enough to really push it in from 10 yards out. He said, we've got to get some different routes down there. I said, well, good. Throw those quick little one move routes to your wide receivers with Tony Giles. And he says, all right, I'll try it tonight. So let's see what he does. Gain of about two, second down and eight. He's not going to throw to anybody. Wilder pulling his way to the 10-yard line. Short of the first down, it's going to be third and about four. You know, I think another thing, you get a rap of not being able to score inside the 10-yard line, and unfortunately, players have tendency to believe what they read and what they hear. And now they've got this feeling that, hey, we can't score inside a 10. And, and you feel like you can't. You're not going to. In do that it. respect, they're much like fighters. I saw Sugar Ray Leonard first time around against Roberto Duran in Montreal. Utterly influenced and not fighting his fight by what he read. There's the clock. And Cooney did the same thing against home. It happens. Third down for Wilder is your single setback. And it's batted away. And he had a guy open, too. And it'll be fourth down, and Giles was there. He certainly was. That's got to be really frustrating for him, but, you know, who knows why those things happen. But at least they better let Capiz put this one between the uprights. Let's get three. You don't want to go away empty hand. Remember, he's got three excellent guys to throw to. Giles, House, the fleet-footed one, and Gordon Jones. I mentioned earlier the regular snapper, Steve Wilson, injured. George Yarno will snap for the attempt of Bill Capis. An attempt of 27 yards. The holder is the putter, Swider. Snaps good. The ball's up to the uprights. And Tampa Bay settles for three. They have the lead with 17 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. They lead the Dolphins 3 to nothing. We'll be back in Tampa in a moment. Tough Chevy trucks are taking charge with the all-new S10 Maxi Cab. Ford Ranger and Toyota don't even have one. Taking charge with available seating for four. Compared to Datsun's extended cab, Maxi Cab has up to 40% more load space. S10 Maxi Cab from America's truck sales leader. Tough Chevy trucks are taking charge. And now on new 82 models only, get 10.9% financing that can save you hundreds of dollars on financing costs. Miniature electronic amplifiers for cable television are made by a company called TRW. They boost TV signals to bring you clear, sharp pictures. Without them, there would be no cable television. Tomorrow is taking shape at a company called TRW. 49ers and Rams in a special edition of NFL Football Thursday night on EBC. Bill Capice successful on a 27-yard attempt. Tampa Bay over Miami, 3-0. 17 seconds remaining in the first quarter. There's Fulton Walker. As I mentioned before, he can take it the distance. A lot of speed. Youngster out of West Virginia. Capice not a long kicker, but he hangs it awfully high. Walker from the one-yard line. And notice when you hang it up that high, you get your blocks, and then the men coming down on coverage can recover from those blocks. Blocks were way upfield on Fulton Walker, and he is taken right at the 15-yard line, where it'll be first down Miami. NCAA College Football Saturday here on ABC. Arkansas against Texas. What a get-together that is. Oh, great Southwest Conference shootout. 
Blue Bonnet Bowl bound Arkansas coming off their strong showing as SMU faces Texas. They're, of course, going to the Sun Bowl at a classic rivalry. Last year, the Hawks knocked off the number one ranked Texas team and dashed their hopes for a national championship, so they'll get it on this Saturday here on ABC. Good coverage by Tampa Bay. Ball marked at the 16-yard line. Young David Whitley looking it over. Zeppelo in motion. Whitley put it on top. Tries to go to the screen to Vigorito. Oh, what a good move and by Vigorito. He, he had no brings place it to back go. inside and gets back just to the line of scrimmage. But he would have been thrown for a loss had he not brought that ball back. End of the first quarter. Tampa Bay. They have never beaten the Dolphins in regular season. They've met but once. They'll try tonight. They need it. A special Christmas gift from Radio Shack. The TRS-80 color computer at $100 off. Instant loading. Back in Tampa. The Miami Dolphins, first down 10. The ball inside their 16-yard line for their second down and 10. Tampa Bay with a fine defense. They're number one in the NFL after three games against the pass, allowing only 97.7 yards. Second overall. But they have always been a strong defensive unit. Eddie Hill in there, set back now for Miami, number 31. Whitney, good runner. Hmm. Is he ever? David Woodley on his own gets a first down. Nifty scramble out over the 25, close to the 28. Finally picked up there by Leroy Salmon, who had covered about 100 yards in pursuit. That, of course, is the value to Woodley, his ability to scramble, to move the football. That's why Don likes to use it. Strzok is a pocket pass. I've been reading some of the newspaper reports that have been here in Tampa the last few days. The Tampa players fear just this from Woodley. They say the guy, you think you have him defense, he does come out and run. Now, this one run will set up that particular thought for the rest of the night, which is good. You do it one time. You don't have to do it a lot. Just do it every now and then so they know you can. Two fine running quarterbacks here tonight. Doug Williams will also take off. Miami has a first down. Ball at their 28-yard line. Whitley under pressure again, trying to go to Doriel Harris. That's Over his outstretched arms, covering with Cedric Brown, incomplete, and Woodley got popped after he released it. <laughs> First quarter numbers coming your way. Well, the rushing yards relatively even, the passing yards, the edge to Tampa Bay, total yards to Tampa Bay, time of possession, the difference inconsequential. And no score. turnovers. The score is Tampa Bay. Three zip. Exactly. I like it. Second down and 10. Matt Moore checks in at wide receiver, number 89. Cephalo stays in, and Doriel Harris moves to the bench for a quick breather. Franklin with a big hole, gets a good block, breaks to the outside, and the big man lumbers down to the 43-yard line. Taken there by Norris Thomas, but he got a good block out in front of him. Eddie Hill, I believe, put the block on the outside man that sprung and the Franklin. tight end Bruce Hardy break. Good crack down. You're right. There might have been Kucherberg out there, too, as a matter of fact, with a little lead block. Not enough Dolphins around. And Andre's got, he's a big old boy, as they say. Moves a little faster than you might think. Steady, strong, broke the Miami Dolphins rookie running mark a year ago. Set by Jim Kick many years ago. Had over 700 yards, did Franklin. As a rookie a year ago, and a first down, they give it to Franklin once again. Another big opening over the right side, and Franklin this time inside the 45. Close to the 43-yard line, another Miami first down. Hey, uh, he was a great football player in Nebraska. He was noted for his blocking. He blocked for L.I.M. Hip, Rick Byrne, Jarvis Redwine. He does all of that, and as you can see, much more for Miami. He's turned into a fine running back. Well, that's the kind of offensive line work Miami is now showing that they used to have when Monty Clark was there and the Dolphins were in the house in unbeaten days. Moving right up the middle is Eddie Hill, and another big opening is Eddie Hill. He falls to the 35. They'll mark it, however, at the 37 for a gain of six. It'll be second down and four. Hill, of 
course, out of Memphis State, acquired last year from the Rams. Rams have always thought he had tremendous potential, but he didn't prove out there, and finally, they let him go. Now, the Rams are a benevolent team, too. They like to spread the talent around, you know, around the league. They don't want to keep it all themselves. Second down and four. Inside handoff, Franklin. Using his 225 pounds, but coming up short of the first down by about a yard and a half at the 35-yard line. You mentioned the Rams, Don. Thursday yeah. night, Anaheim Stadium, the Rams against the Niners. The Super Bowl champions now having to fight back after that astounding upset against Stabler and the Saints yesterday. The Rams coming off their first victory of the year against Kansas City. Should be a good one, Frank. Always is. That's always been a great rivalry. Third and two, and it's a tough two yards against a really sturdy Tampa Bay defensive unit. Franklin will try it, right side. Picks it up easily, gets another good block, breaks inside the 30, down around the 28-yard line. First down Miami, they're on the prowl. Hugely effective blocking there, done by that offensive line. They, they seem to me to, to kind of neutralize the defensive line and allow Franklin, if you notice, just kind of bounce out to the outside. You kind of wonder sometimes why backs continue to jump right in the middle of that line where all the people are. That time Franklin saw that they were kind of just neutralized, slid out the outside, picked it up. I mentioned earlier Dave Stalls had to leave the game. He started. He had a sore back, we understand, before the game and the rookie, Booker Reese, is in at defensive left in right where they're going. Going Tampa Bay and that's where they're running. That's exactly. Right. Booker, let's see how you can do, fella. On first and ten, Woodley. Up, trying to go quickly to the tight end, Bruce Hardy, incomplete. It'll be second down and ten. That's just rushing the pass. He was open. Hardy was open across the middle. It's uh, obviously a pattern you've seen many times. Tight end just releases, comes back across the middle, and trying to work between the linebackers with the uh, rush that pass. But Dave Stahl, as you saw, checked back into the lineup. That's number 65. Out comes Booker Reese. But the play that set up this whole drive was the scramble by Woodland. Yeah. Got him a good first down, didn't he? Second down and 10. 28-yard line. Franklin single setback for Miami. Woodley tries to hit the second man, and it was deflected by the defensive man covering Eddie Hill out of the backfield. That'll bring up third down and 10. Woodley had Cephalo wide open on the sidelines. Andy Hawkins was out there covering Eddie Hill out of the backfield. He got a hand on it. Three to nothing, Tampa Bay. 27-yard field goal. Bill Capice, they have the lead. 10-15 remaining in the first half. Bigarito, 32. Eddie Hill. The setbacks out of the shotgun. Whitney. It's the release, and it goes to the tight end, Joe Rose, the best receiver of the three tight ends that Miami deploys. Good be at first. It's going to be close. Hugh Green dropped out defensively from his linebacker spot to pick up Joe Rose. That's a good move by Rose there. Just kind of roll with that pressure fire. Hugh Green to the outside, come back into his pattern. Hugh had to hustle to uh, catch up. And are they going to measure, guys, or is it... I don't believe he has it. It's I think be it's very a close shot. Gonna measure. While they're measuring, let me say this, Don. Joe Thomas, an old familiar name, astute in the evaluation of talent, knows that the Dolphins do not have a single great linebacker, but the way Shula uses the three of them, as Frank just indicated, he gets the most out of them. He brings tight Rose, in. Yeah. Not linebacker. I'm sorry. Yeah. He says that... The feeling is that no linebacker, not even a Hugh Green, can cover Rose. And so they use him as their primary pass receiver among the tight ends. Forgive me. Yes, of course, I meant tight ends. Well, they do. Yeah, they right. don't do it too badly. They had 61 receptions between them. They didn't have any big numbers individually. Joe Rose and Lee both had 23, but they got 61 receptions out of their tight end out of the tight ends a year ago. I've always read, I really do feel that that's really a very important position that a lot of teams overlook. If you can utilize that tight end position, it just it really limits, limits a lot of the defensive coverages that teams can, can use against you. Fourth down, less than a yard. 
They came to play, didn't they? Whoa! Whitney, he should have it. I don't know. I don't know. Riding on the back. You know, I think one of the things that maybe the center Stevenson, the rest of the country may not be totally aware of, but not too many years ago, this whole area was really big Dolphin fans. And then they got their own team here, and they tried to develop this state rivalry, and they've done a pretty good job. This is kind of a Super Bowl atmosphere by these Tampa Bay oh, Buccaneers. No fans. question. There's a great intensity here. As you look at John McKay, the Bucks have never beaten the Dolphins, though they've only played them once in the regular season. And the Dolphins have been reluctant to play the Bucks. Some of the scribes have said, as we look at the measurement, hold on. And a key one it is. He's got it, Frank. Got him uh, the link to the football. First down, Miami. So inside the 18-yard sure. line. This is one of those things that, you know, again, I really believe is a judgment call. Woodley, good athlete, makes a dive over. They didn't have much to go, but it really boils down is where is the referee going to spot the ball? Just to finish the story, Frank, some of the scribes have said that Culverhouse, who owns the Bucks, and Robbie owns the Dolphins, don't like one another because Culverhouse fought the dual ownership proposition in the league. Not true. Robbie says it's not true. He says the intensity was too much and caused too many injuries. On first down, Whitney back. I don't think that's true either. Fires out was complete to Cephalo and... Good coverage by Norris Thomas, the former Miami Dolphin, traded here a couple of years ago, and a starter, as was Neil Colsey, who was starting for Tampa Bay. That's kind of an interesting story, in a way, Frank. You talk about Norris Thomas, as he set below, come to him and said, there's not a receiver he has in the pattern that's going to make any yardage off for him this time. Seppelow didn't go anywhere downfield. And Norris Thomas is a heck of a hitter. He's a fierce guy. Yeah, it really is. He's made out to be the best with finesse coverage. But when he and Colsey came over, they just didn't seem to fit into that Dolphin uh, scheme of things. And they fit in very well here in Tampa. Pick up the two, second down and eight. Ball at the 16-yard line. Here comes the blitz. Franklin sprawling over his own man as the blitz was on. They really tunneled Geisler on that play, and there was no place for Franklin to go. Uh, Brantley. Brantley came in from the inside linebacker position, took his man right back into Franklin. It's such an old, but Brantley is a guy. The linebackers are the key, I think, to a 3-4 defense, really. You've got to have the big guys, the three guys up front to neutralize that line, but they've got to fill those holes by the linebackers. And Brantley's doing a good job there. They're really quite pleased uh, from another standpoint. So the younger guys they got coming in down there. Third down, passing situation dictated. And we have the shotgun. 15th play of the drive coming up. And it took too long. Too long. Clock ran out. Jeff Davis is a young linebacker for the Buck defense. That's giving Cecil Johnson a real goal for his position at the left inside linebacker. Cecil was moved over to that position when Hugh Green came into camp. Cecil, who's had good days with the Bucks, is having trouble this year. He's fallen off. Jeff Davis, fifth-round draft choice from Clemson, has been a great, great joy. Delay of game, number 16, offense. Called against David Whitley, late getting out of the huddle. They'll back him up five. Jerry Seaman and his crew working the game tonight. So it'll be third down, 15. The ball at the 22-yard line of Tampa Bay. 7.45 remaining in the half. The Bucks on top, 3 to nothing. Once again from the shotgun. Three-man rush. Complete. Vigorito. And Vigorito short of the first down, taken out of bounds somewhere around the 12-yard line. Mike Washington defensively there for Tampa Bay. Yahoo was, they say, Virginia. That's where Vigorito's from. Yahoo was. We will see. Uva Von Schaman. He's well again, Frank, and kicking very well. Gained all that weight back he lost early in the season during training camp. He lost about 25 pounds with about with colitis. Five and six on the season. It was long, however, only 42 yards. Don Strock is the holder. Bob Kitchenberg will provide the snap. A 29-yard effort. Right through the heart, and we have a tied football game at 7.30 remaining in the half. The Bucks and the Dolphins tied at three. 
And we'll be back at a jam-packed Tampa Stadium in just a moment. 38 off the clock. We tie it up at three. They, however, did have to settle for the three-pointer. The delay of game penalty. Perhaps playing a major role there. On the third and 15, they came up about three yards short. Michael Morton and Johnny Ray are deep for Tampa Bay. Von Chaman to kick away. There's Michael Morton, who speeds to out of Nevada. Von Chaman hammers one deep into the end zone. They'll leave that one. Touchback, and Tampa Bay will have the ball at their 20-yard line. He's well again. Strength is back. Got his leg back, hasn't he? Yeah. Luther Von Schaumann banging it deep in the end zone. Tampa Bay will have a first and ten of their 20 when we come back. Panasonic introduces our smallest, lightest VHS video recorder. By Tampa Bay back in 1976. They were all pro. They weren't stupid, were they? No, they weren't. Rated his brother this past year, Dewey, to San Diego, along with David Lewis. Their defensive coordinator, Tom Bass, also went out to the Chargers. First and ten. Game tied at three. 7.24 remaining in the half. This is Wilder. Outside of Wilder. Up around the 24-yard line for a gain of four. It'll be second down and six. Uh, here is the defensive genius of the Miami Dolphins, Bill Armsparger. And he is that, too. Yeah, exactly that, Frank. Great coach. Takes personnel and makes the personnel fit the spot. Interestingly, the Dolphins worked out as a team during the strike more than any other single team in the league. And it shows in that play. We're second down and six. Wilder. And Owens, the two setbacks. Play action by Williams. And he fires a, an out pass that was hung on a line to Gordon Jones, incomplete. Gordon... Gerald Small was there. The little man who was one of the pioneers of Monday Night Football, Chet Forty, who began with Don and me in September 1970 as Billy Nelson and the Browns beat Joe Namath and the Jets, is unfortunately not with us tonight. He rarely, if ever, misses a game, but he had to tonight. He had to go home from Houston after the great debacle of Friday night. Death in the family, the passing of Chet's uncle, Lou Conn. He'll be back with us, of course, too. Picture is provided tonight by a very talented young director, Craig Janoff. Third down and six. Down goes Williams. No place to go. And the big man, Bob Bonauer, we told you earlier to keep an eye on him because... Steve Wilson, the regular buck center, out of the game tonight with a bad ankle. And Jim Leonard, filling in, has his hands full. Bob Howard gets a good initial shot. Pushes his way off. There really was just nobody open downfield. Bob Howard made a good escape move. Came back and made the sack. So Larry Swider sets up in the end zone. Good opportunity for field position for Miami. Vigorito standing at about his 44-yard line. Swider gets a good one this time. Driving Vigorito back to his 37. Good move by Vigorito. <laughs> Tommy Vigorito, second year man out of Virginia, gets it back into Buck territory near the 42 yard line. What a kick running. He can kill you. He killed the Jets. Take a look, John. Well, this is the way Vigorito's looking at it. But you'll see that the quick initial move by Morris is evaded. He comes back in the inside, makes a nice run, gets back in there almost to the 40-yard line. The Dolphins are set up to go. Running back punch is an art, and this man has it down. We'll be back in a moment. From the beginning, the Buick automobile has been luxurious, comfortable, prestigious, and almost without fail, a reflection of its time. Spirited, reserved, adventurous. In the 50s and 60s, right along with expectations, Buicks were big. 
In the 70s, with gas no longer cheap and sometimes hard to find, Buick was a pioneer in the development and use of a light, efficient power plant, a V6 engine, for lighter, more efficient cars. And so on into the 80s, an age of sophisticated electronics. New V6s, 4s, diesels, turbocharging, fuel injection, T-types, aerodynamics, new technology, and our old friends. Luxury, comfort, prestige, and confidence. We figure it's a lot easier to know where you're going when you're sure of where you've been. Wouldn't you really rather have a Buick? Sunday. I'm back. Steve Martin is the jerk. That's right. 5.56 remaining in the half. A rapidly moving game. We are tied at three. Frank Gifford, Howard Cassell, along with Don Meredith, getting ready to start on a rather interesting eight days. We'll be in Los Angeles for the 49ers and the Rams on Thursday, and a week from tonight we'll be in Detroit for the Jets and the Lions. First down and 10, the Dolphins following a 22-yard punt return by Vigarito are at the Bucks' 41-yard line. Lay fake, Whitney has the man open, it's the tight end, Bruce Hardy, and down goes Bruce Hardy. Andy Hawkins there defensively to make the stop after a pickup of five. It'll be second and five. Bruce Hardy is the tight end who can do pretty good at both blocking and receiving. Well, Ronnie Lee may be the better blocker, and he was shaken up earlier in the game, and the other tight end, Joe Rose, considered the better of the receivers. Have you noticed how often Tampa Bay goes to the 4-2 now, Frank? They do move around. They didn't do that under Tom Bass, but now they're... Defensive coordinator is a longtime associate of John McKay. That's Wayne Fox. Fox with McKay at USC for many years. Second and five. Woodley takes the draw. He's in trouble, and down he goes. And he is buried. Andy Hawkins, I believe, there first, but he got a lot of help from his friends, Dave Logan and Hugh Green. Lost is all the way back to about the 40-yard line. This is one of those little play fakes in the middle of the line that's supposed to hold that linebacker, and nobody took the fake to Vigorito. And now Woodley's out there by himself, and he's getting, look at Hawkins coming in there. <laughs> Great pursuit. The guy's really made some, picked up some yardage in it. Dave Logan, the nose tackle, two linebackers green. Woodley's eyes as big as dollars. Oh, man. Yeah. Coming into this game, Tampa Bay had 13 sacks far ahead of last year. Third best in the league behind Houston's 18 after three games. Out of the shotgun. Whitley yeah, was picked, picked off. off. Mike Washington comes down with the football at the 20-yard line. That ball was not very well thrown. It was just high, and it took off on him a little bit. Mike Washington, who is the team leader in receptions anyway, only He's one ahead of Cedric Brown. Let's take a look at it again. Not much pressure. Just zings it a little bit high. I'll tell you, any one of three bucks could have picked that one off. He really put that into a crowd. And Tampa Bay gets the turnover. And they get the ball back at their 21-yard line. We'll be back in Tampa right after this. When a business grows, it often grows out of control. Simple procedures become gigantic problems. Things like billing, filing, and shipping become too big to handle the old way. Why not get one of IBM's low-cost small computers like Datamaster? It puts you back in control, and it can grow. Here's to a great future. As your business grows. Chevy trucks are taking charge with the all-new S10 Blazer. Available with a revolutionary Instatrack four-wheel drive system. Shift from freewheeling two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive high and back at any speed. S10 Blazer from America's truck sales leader. Top Chevy trucks are taking charge. And now on new 82 models only, get 10.9% financing that can save you hundreds of dollars on financing costs. Last year, Arkansas ran hog-wild over Texas, trampling their hopes for the national championship. Saturday, Texas wants revenge. A real Southwest shootout on ABC. And a miracle chart that'll show you the development of Doug Williams, number one draft pick out of Grambling back in 1978. Started out the first year with a little over 37%, up to 50%. Unfortunately, Doug is 
not been that much on national television, and most people have seen him at his weakest. He's, he's had some great games. He's going in the right direction, isn't he? On first and ten, and his fire is complete out of the 35-yard line to the 37-yard line, taken there by the speedster Kevin House. And House gets the first down. That is your quick hitter. Yeah, but I really think that's the kind of thing. You know, Doug really does have an exceptionally strong arm, and that, that's well, a cliche that's thrown away, but House is the guy that's got the speed. He can go at the left. That, that that's no, that's no uh, uh, real, uh, you know, finesse in that route. It's just coming back down, making a quick move to the inside. If you don't have a linebacker in front of that, there's no way one of the fine defenders like Don McNeil can cover it. House has great speed. He has to respect that. McNeil's one of the better receivers around, and it really is great. Get the ball to him quick. First down and ten. This is Wilder, and Wilder gets good yardage out of the 45 to the 46 short of the first down by about a yard is Larry Gordon. That's such a plus to anybody's offense is when you can come back, throw to Kevin House on the outside. He's got that speed. Turn back around on a first down play. Hand it off basically right up the middle and pick up that kind of yardage. That's, that's nice balance. Having watched this Tampa Bay team against Dallas, it was easy to expect this kind of dog fight against Miami. Well, they really did play well against Dallas. They just didn't win. Second down and one. 46-yard line of the Bucks. Owens. And Owens gets the first down. And he also gets into Miami territory near the 48-yard line. Bob Brzezinski defensively there, along with Ernie Rohn for Miami. Brzezinski is a guy that we've known from the L.A. Rams and had contract difficulties and was kind of shipped off to Miami. No one really knew what he was going to do. And, and we've had the opportunity to see him really in the presence of the, when the strike situations come. But he's really fit in so well down there. Really, yeah. And they all admire Shula, him. And Shula knew brilliant. what he was going to do, Don. He gave a third and a second for him. Yeah, he did know he something. Wanted him. Did he? Yeah. And the Rams could use him. First and ten. Owens, another big opener over on that left side. And Owens inside the 45 to about the 43-yard line. The one thing that obviously this kind of an offense does, it, it makes the linebackers more honest. They can't drop back deep. Heading towards the two-minute warning. Owens got six yards. It'll be second down and four. And we will not get another playoff before we do get that two-minute warning. Both pitches being notified as if they didn't know. We'll be back in a moment. Gathering there. We have two minutes remaining in the first half. We are tied at three. Tampa Bay has the football. They have a first and ten. The ball at the 43-yard line of the Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins, 3-0, and oh, along with Washington, the only undefeated teams remaining in the NFL in this abbreviated season of nine games. And for Doug Williams, it will be a third down and four. Jim, stay tuned at halftime to see the action from around the league as it took place yesterday. A lot of surprises. We'll bring you up to date on them. Rained a lot yesterday, most everywhere. Second down and four, rather. I'll correct myself. I said third and four. Well, that's all right. Giles in motion. And this is Owens. And now the Bucks are really ripping the Dolphins' line. Owens has another first down at the 31. Stops the clock at 154. You mentioned, you know, Doug Williams, we've been looking for that big, strong arm. Just a quick flip out to the outside. Good lead block. Coming in on the inside. By Wilder. Wilder had a good lead block. Owens followed it well. Moved to the outside. Picked up more than enough for your first down. 31-yard line. There's Owens. Teamed last year, as I mentioned before, with Jerry Eckwood, who's out for the season. The back injury, doing it all on his own this season. Giles in motion. Owens once again, following Wilder. Uh, stays on his feet. Owens once again, out of bounds, inside the 25, short of the first down, stopping the clock at 1.49. A.J. Dewey almost had that exceptional play from the linebacker. Yeah, he but, just barely missed it. That's that ifs and buts stuff, right? Yeah, but Owens kept his balance sure beautifully did. and got five yards out of it. Six-yard pickup. Power to be exact. It'll be second and four. Okay. Well, give or take a yard. Hey, it's okay. We're the month, friends. It's all right. Huge crowd. There were 114,000 plus no-shows around the league yesterday, and there does not appear to be any here tonight. And they're all wearing the orange. 
Try to see. Dials in motion. Second and four. Owens once again. And Owens up in a good tackle out there. Gerald Small, and he will pop you. Those are the two guys. McNeil and Small, that's the crowd that Frank was just talking about. I mentioned the orange part. You can pick that up. Okay. 115,000 in round numbers. No shows yesterday. 15%, same as last week. Still, doubtless, the hangover from the protracted strike. But here tonight, nothing but enthusiasm. Hangovers will get you every time. They don't get you, they'll sure hurt you. That's right. You shouldn't order to do it. Third and three. Back to the inside goes Owens, and he will have the first down at the 20 or just inside. Heading to one minute. And now, first time out. Doug Williams finally realized he wanted timeout. He ran over and found himself an official, and that's what he calls. Good first down effort by Owens. So the Bucks call timeout. 54 seconds on the clock. They have two timeouts remaining. We'll be back. This is John McKay on the right. The offensive signal caller is Bill Nelson, a former quarterback of John McKay's first national championship team at USC. First Monday night football game ever, Frank. Nelson to Gary Collins, the familiar post pattern, touchdown, and the Browns were never headed. First and ten, the Bucks. Game tied at three. 54 seconds remaining in the half. The ball are at the 20-yard line of Miami. The quick toss is to Owens. Go staying inbounds. Good Pac good. will continue to run. He'll have the first down. It'll be first and goal close to the eight-yard line. How would I remember that first Time game? out once again, Tampa Bay. I remember that first game we were talking about, you know, there's a lot of publicity on Namath's knees and all the surgery. And we started looking into it. And Bill Nelson had had like eight, eight he knees. First knees. Yeah. yeah. A lot. Hey, Owens has carried the ball 11 for the night, but he's carried it the last seven times. Well, he's got big Charlie Hanna out there in front of him, big 73, a good block. Owens made a good move to kind of hurdle over one of the defenders. That was good aggressive run. Real turning point of that first game. Remember, Don was Homer Jones' return of the second half kickoff for a touchdown. Was that the same Homer Jones? You guys stop living in the past here. <laughs> well, well, this is 1982. Yeah, but Nelson reminded us of that. There he is. Billy Nelson right there. It's a big game. Yeah, but you look at John McKay. You know what John McKay is thinking? He's thinking about 1972. He says, what a year 72 was. <laughs> he calls across the field. Shula, what do you think? 72 was a great year. Why? Because neither one of them lost the football game in 72. The Dolphins 17-0. The Trojans 12-zip. Each of those guys were head coaches. You think I haven't been doing my homework? You are wrong. I well, am really you are dangerous with homework. But look at Thursday where you guys are going to be. In Anaheim. Ah. <laughs> All right. Setting the situation. 46 seconds remaining <laughs> in the halftime. We are tied at three. A pair of field goals. Capiz von Schaumann. The Bucks have a first down. Goal to go. The ball inside the nine-yard line. They have one timeout remaining. First and goal on the eight-yard line. He remember 72. Gordon Jones split to the left. Kevin House to the right. And uh -oh. incomplete. Williams firing out. To Jimmy. Jimmy Giles. It would have been caught. Scrimmage, as it were. Well, remember what we told you. Frank mentioned it earlier. The Cowboys against the Cowboys. The Bucks had the ball five times inside Dallas's 10. Did not score the TD. You can't keep blowing those opportunities. During the next half, we're going to show you a different kind of statistic, a better way we think to measure offensive. Wait a minute, not we. Not we. <laughs> well, he has a frog in his pocket. John Farrow has brought this play in. Second down, goal to go. Miami showing blitz. No flags. A lot of movement, but no flags. And Williams fires it incomplete. You know, you, you can't help but wonder if they're not thinking too much about the fact that they can't score inside the 10. Neither one of those last attempts, you'd see Giles drop a ball. That doesn't happen too often. Doug threw that one away. He was well covered. Maybe they don't have those kind of routes that they can score with down there. Hey, they're down here once again with the first down inside the 10. They have now worked themselves to a third down and goal to go. It's not easy. 
there is a single setback. 38 seconds. One timeout for Tampa. Carter in motion. Fired and is caught down around the one yard line and then bobbled as a scramble. The Dolphins saying it was incomplete, but I think it was blown dead about the one yard line. I mean, very interesting because you're talking about a fourth down situation, assuming that it is a reception. Uh oh, they're taking it away from him. Nope, they're saying that it was not a completed pass, and Giles is visibly upset. Well, let's just take a look and see if we can make it out any better on the replay. Quick little flip, from Giles across the middle, he's wide open. Boy, did he snap that off? Yeah, but you wonder why. Wait a minute. Oh, there he goes. Right. They said he never had possession. We'll see it with our reverse angle camera. Should see it better. Easy to guess up here, but you wonder why Giles falls down. It, if he could have just kept his feet, maybe and moved over in front of that thing. The ball did come out, and I think it's a good call. I think a very good I call. That brings yeah. up fourth down. And once again, Tampa Bay has been stymied after first down inside the 10-yard line. Now, this can start to get to you after a while. I think it already has. seven times in the last six quarters. Don McKay saying perhaps to himself, what do I have to do? <laughs> you know, Frank, I, this is what I was talking about. Points per hundred yards. That means offensive opportunism. Miami has been the most opportunistic team offensively. The Raiders second, Green Bay third, Washington fourth. Notice the least opportunistic team for a hundred yards gained. 27-yard effort. Bill Capice. And Capice unties the game. He is now successful on two field goals, and Tampa Bay has a 6-3 lead. We'll be back with more football after this message from the National Football League. Bay has the lead 6-3, 22 seconds remaining in the half. Again, reminding you, halftime highlights coming up. Action from yesterday. Deep is Fulton Walker for Miami, and Bill Capice is set to kick off. This time, Capice will carry it to the three-yard line, and here comes Walker. Stacked up out around the 23-yard line. Clock stops. Change of offensive and defensive units at 15 seconds remaining in the half. Well, whether they score from inside the 10 or not, this is a tough cookie, this team. As a unit, defensively, they can give you fits. And they're proving out so far. I think most coaches around the league would certainly agree that before you're going to win, you have to start with that defensive unit. And the Bucks do have, I think, one of the better ones that I've seen. Yeah, they're right on schedule. They've been giving up 97 yards per game through the air, the best in the NFL. They've only given up 24 yards to the Dolphins thus far here in the first half. Woodley from the shotgun. Directing traffic, and it was this almost, was almost picked off. It really was. Good defensive effort. As old Brantley again. Brantley, the inside linebacker. Interestingly, Frank, under Mike McCormick, as you look at this, again, under Mike McCormick, suddenly Seattle has great defense. That was a shocker yesterday. Yeah, I don't think even Seattle could really say they're going to shut Pittsburgh out, right? I don't they, think Pittsburgh they believes did. it. No. Seattle so now two and two. Yeah, you hope Terry's arm or shoulder, what it hurts, is better. Uh, you always hate to see the top players in the league get hurt. Or you hate to see anybody get hurt. Nine seconds remaining in the half. Whitney, that one I do not understand. Uh, no, that's what I do with nine seconds. Uh, a little dangerous. Use your power runner right in the middle. Time expires here in the first half, and Tampa Bay has a 6-3 lead to Bill Capice field goals. Tampa Bay's defense showing strong again tonight. They still can't get it into the end zone, however. Bengals Rebels Riverfront Stadium, Cincinnati. Pick up with first quarter action. Bengals leading 7-0. Jim Plunkett aiming for Marcus Allen, the past Heisman Trophy winner. The ball picked off by the great veteran defensive back, Kenny Riley. 56 yards, untouched. Touchdown, the Bengals.
Fields lead it 14 to nothing. In the third quarter, it was 21 to 10, and Plunkett wasn't ready to fall. Looking for the sometimes incomparable Cliff Branch, number 21, and finding the speedster, a veteran, yes, but still so swift and elusive, and in he went for the touchdown. The Bengals 21, the Raiders 17. But the Bengals weren't about to fold either. They struck back with immediacy. Number 14, Kenny Anderson, the brilliant quarterback, looking for the veteran wide receiver. Isaac Curtis, number 85 from San Diego State. Did you notice he stepped out of bounds there at the 28-yard line of the Raiders? But that set up ultimately this play by Kenny Anderson, doing what he does perhaps better than any other quarterback in football. The quick opening and then scampering in for the touchdown. And the Bengals led 28 to 17. Anderson so great. The Bengals went on to win it in a critical game. A great football team. 31 to 17. It was raining in RFK Stadium in Washington, and it had an effect on both teams. But Joey Theismann with this play, first to Riggins, then to Monk, flea flicker, and down to Charlie Brown, complete. And one would have expected a touchdown, but a subsequent interception stalled the drive. But what a great day for Charlie Brown. Look at this and look at Theismann's figures. The deep pass again to Brown. He's beat Roynell Young, and this time it is a touchdown. That made it 10 to nothing Redskins. What a day for Charlie. Then in the third quarter, 10 to three Redskins. Jaworski looking for the angular one, Harold Carmichael. So often, so great in the clutch. This time, no exception. This is a 44-yard touchdown pass. The extra point failed, and the Redskins led at 10 to 9. It went to 13 to 9 Redskins in the fourth quarter. And now the rain really took hold of Jaworski. He couldn't get his footing. His hands wet. He couldn't control the football. And so there was this interception. Watch closely. The ball picked up by one of the union's foremost activists, Mark Murphy. And the interception killed it for the Eagles. Washington still unbeaten. 4-0, only team in the league, 13-9. Looking for the right fields to invest in, and the right investments in those fields can be frustrating. That's why Merrill Lynch does the groundwork with research. To seek out the best investments, Merrill Lynch brought together the best researchers. And it is turning up the unseen or overlooked that makes us what we are. Lynch, a breed apart. NCAA football and ABC Sports, 20 great years, and here's another reason why. Showdowns. Last year in the Fox San Francisco. Give Kenny Stabler a cup of coffee. He's ready to play. Had a great day. This is score time. Nothing, nothing. First quarter action. The pass to Wayne Wilson. 10 yards. Touchdown. 7 to nothing. Saints. Second quarter. It became 7 to 3. Saints. This team suddenly red hot. Maybe the most surprising team at the moment in the National Football. Football League credit from Phillips. There's the handoff. Stabler to George Rogers. Heisman Trophy winner, South Carolina. Look at him go. On this joint, 38 yards. Set up a touchdown, and the Saints led it 13-3. to Then, in the third quarter, with the score 16-6, to this, Joey Montana. The ball intercepted by Ricky Jackson. He returns it 32 yards, and the Saints moved on to a 23-20 victory, their third consecutive triumph. Who would have believed it? Anaheim State.
Stadium. The Chiefs against the Rams. The Rams winless going in. Second quarter action. Wendell Tyler having a sensational day. You saw the stats there. Seven to nothing Chiefs. Burt Jones on the move now. Watch him. He is looking for spots and hits Mike Gooman, a former Penn State great. And Gooman with this long run set up. Number 26, Wendell Tyler for a one-yard touchdown, 7-7. Seven to seven. But it was only the beginning for Wendell Tyler. There was this, the shovel pass back to him from Jones, and in he poured. Touchdown, 14-7 Rams. Now, in the third quarter, with the score still 14-7 Rams, Jeff Gossett punts. Oh, how Giff and Dandy and I have seen this man do it before. Leroy Irvin, a brilliant punt runner. Just brilliant. Look at him. Spot that hole. Dart through. Cut right along the sideline. 63 yards. Touchdown. Punt return. The final score, 20-14. to 14, The Rams, their first victory of the year. And don't forget, you'll see the Rams Thursday night at Anaheim Stadium against the Niners fighting back. The Pittsburgh Steelers against the Seahawks in the Kingdome in Seattle. First quarter action. Terry Bradshaw back to pass. Hit right there by Jacob Green. The shoulder damage. Bradshaw did not return to action. A precursor of things to come. Because by the third quarter, the astounding Seahawks were leading nine to nothing. That was Frank Pollock from Baylor fumbling through the end zone. And so it stayed nine to nothing. Pittsburgh squandering opportunities, winning to Seattle to give the game to them. Zahn right there with a touchdown pass to Paul John. 16 to nothing, Seattle, and the Pittsburgh Steelers still don't believe it. It is a fierce rival. Second half action about to get underway. Once again, Tampa Bay, who had their problems a week ago, dominating Dallas's statistics, but they couldn't get in from inside the 10-yard line. They have failed thus far tonight, twice already, settling for field goals. First quarter stats we'll show you, and then we'll show you how to to the first half stats. So if we can get the little switch, watch this. Television magic coming your way. <laughs> Halftime stats. How about that? we got computers everywhere. It yep. amazes me. Exactly the kind of game we anticipated and prophesized before the contest itself. I mean, if we didn't know, you'd think we knew something. Yep. But we know we don't. If we do, you are the one. And you have a scoop. Our biggest danger is we don't understand we don't understand. <laughs> That's basically true. Well, I guess for a quick moment, we should point out that the players are supposed to vote on the new agreement on Thursday. We'll see if that really happens under any circumstances. It's probable that by now the bulk of the rank and file understand that the union did indeed achieve great gains. And to explain that in detail, one would have to give you a quick course in labor law and labor relations. Well, let's don't do that. No, 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 no don't do that. No, I agree with you both. It's just my opinion yeah. that the new agreement will be overwhelmingly ratified. Well, I'm so... Thank you, Samuel Goffers. That's right. I'm so tired of all that junk. Ooh. Set to go. The Bucks fighting almost, you could say, for their life here in the NFL, at least in terms of reaching the playoffs. Eight teams for each conference will advance. And the Bucks are 0-3. Miami is 3-0. Washington and Miami still the only undefeated teams remaining in the NFL. Miami to kick off. Uwe von Schaumann with the big foot. Michael Morton is deep along with Johnny Ray Smith. And this will be Michael Morton. A little rookie from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, out to the 22-year if they can engineer a quick drive. What would do wonders for their confidence? Because I think Don is right as you look at Morton, the college, the rookie, and the age. What would do wonders for their confidence would be getting a ball into the end zone. And if they could engineer a quick drive and get a touch, boy, what it would do for them. Well, the drive just before the end of the first half, they were ripping off big chunks of yardage at midfield, and then they... Their problems once again down in 
inside the 10-yard line. First down and 10, 21-yard line, and here comes Wilder. And take it over there on the right side. A.J. Dewey, who will drop into the pass defense and also rush the passer, and he is really adapted to that change. Tremendous player. As you know, Frank, the problem with playing a Shula coach team is the manner in which the Dolphins usually adjust in the second half. Also, the least penalized team for the past two years in the NFL. They do not make the mistake that hurts them, or they make them very seldom. Gain of a couple, second down and eight. Look out, look out. And three on Williams, and still he strong arms it in the direction of Owens, but he was really hammered by Larry Gordon. Nobody picked up Gordon on that backside. It's one of those situations that quarterbacks, that, that starts nightmares for you because you see Doug with that right-handed throw, drops back, really doesn't see Gordon, kind of senses him coming, gets rid of it last second. I think you feel the ground shaking, don't you, Don? Yeah, there is a way. Yeah, but you do kind of sense all this stuff. I, and that's one of the reasons why I really believe it's important for quarterbacks to call their play. They know what's happening out there, and you get a rhythm. And uh, when you have to sit and wait for that play to come in, you wait till everybody else gets the rhythm. Third down and eight. Ball at the 22-yard line of Tampa. Trying to get the screen off. Ooh. Incomplete. Well, tried to get it out to Wilder. So they couldn't do it. And speaking of adjustment, you see how quickly Shula went to the blitz? Don't blame him because, you know, it, a blitz is one of the things that, that really tests an offense all the way through. Test the, how, how well they, they can adjust, pick up keys. That's for the backs, that's for the line, that's for everybody. And if they don't pick them up, you're going to get them. If they pick it up, you're thinking that you can gamble. They're going to hit you for a long game. Got a quick look, Tommy Figueredo. At the 35-yard line of Miami, Larry Swider to do the punting for Tampa Bay. And off the side of his foot, bad kick by Swider. But again, it takes a Tampa bounce, and it was touched by a Dolphin. It'll be dead at that point. So Miami will have fine field position close to their 37-yard line. They'll hate to talk about unfortunate things that happen. But a very great lady died. Kathleen Rooney, the wife of Art Rooney, and the three of us want to extend our deepest sympathy to the Rooney family. Greatest people in the world. She was a great, great lady. Karen Hart attack, 78 years ago. Lovely lady, great family. Wonderful people. I know them too. Don Strock is the quarterback now for the Dolphins. First down and 10. Uh, Shula has made the change. This is Eddie Hill swinging the right side. Hill up to the 40-yard line. A gain of about four. It'll be second down and six. Don Strock. Many say the best relief man in the game today. He started on occasion over the years. He came in from 73, started many times for Greasy when Greasy was shaken up or injured. But he does his best work coming in. He yeah, will ever forget the playoff game, the divisional championship game played between San Diego and Miami a year ago when Strzok almost pulled that one out. He passed over 400 yards that afternoon in an overtime loss to the Chargers. Second and six, Strzok. I know. Hill has the first down midfield. They're close to it. Again, what I meant by Shula's... Oh, isn't that nice? <laughs> Shula's ability to adjust. He's really enjoying things. In comes the pocket pass. ...with that philosophy, uh, but that's just my opinion. You know, I, I, I really think that I'm partial to that position. That's one position that you got to really go for. Uh, if you're going to have a quarterback, you get your quarterback. Now, if Strzok can't play the first half, then that tell me why. I mean, you're going to, if you're going to play the second half, get somebody to play all of them. Apologize for our audio coming your way. We are having a bit of an audio problem. We are on our reserve backup audio, and he gets away from Strzok. Tampa Bay says they've got the football, and Gary Seaman, our referee, agrees. Bottom of the pile. That's just one of the reasons. Leroy Selman. <laughs> just one of them. Tampa Bay, it's a turnover. Good field position. Midfield, let's watch it again. offensive unit. He's the guy that can do it. You go back in there and you look in that huddle and that's where you get them all together. 
And more than likely, it was just a quick, he did. You see Strzok pulled away too soon. Now you say, okay, here's a second, second team guy comes in. He's going to make mistakes like that. It's going to cost him. Thank you, Coach Meredith. You're welcome. We'll be right back. It worked all right for Miami. They beat the Buffalo Bills last Sunday, 9 to 7. For Tampa Bay, however, they lost to Dallas 14 to 9. First down and 10, Tampa Bay, 47 yard line of the Miami Dolphins. The Bucks on top, 6 to 3. Giles reversing his motion. Owens, no place to go. And James Owens, the tailback, taking just about at the line of scrimmage, maybe gets a yard. Don't forget, Frank and I and Fran Talkinson will be in Anaheim Thursday night, special edition, Monday night football. The Niners against the Rams. And next Monday, Jets coming off a big win where they balance their mistakes with some against the Detroit Lions. I tell you, Frank, the Jets got personnel coming out of their ears. Yeah, they've got themselves a running back they haven't had in a long time. Freeman McNeil. He's a football player. They've got the defense. Second down and ten. Williams. Arm was in motion. It'll be ruled incomplete. Jerry Seaman. Very lucky, too. Right on top of it. Says his arm was in motion. Would not have been received so graciously in the Orange Bowl. I tell you, the man seems to have a hex on himself in Monday Night Football. Well, that time, it appeared to me that, you know, the reason that pressure is in there, and, and you see guys like Dewey and some of the other guys, Baumhauer, they're in there. They had terrific defensive coverage in that <laughs> second there. There was nobody there. Isn't that sweet? What, what that say? Tampa Bay and I love Dan D. Third down, 10. 47 yard line. Bucks with the football. There you go. That's Carter, Gerald Carter, the third year man out of Texas A&M. And under yeah. a great deal of pressure, Williams got it to him. That is the way. First down. You give it a guy that's got an arm like Doug Williams, who can throw it so, he can really throw it hard, he can throw it accurately. You don't want to mess around with double breaks, double moves. Give the guy one break and throw the ball to him. That time, that was just a simple pattern. And make them stop that one kind of pass. And if they do, then you go to those double breaks and stuff. Maybe the biggest play of the game thus far. But that's the kind of pattern that you throw down there on the 10-yard line. See, so you have no offense inside the 10. Throw a one break, one break pattern. Either inside or outside. Let him go. T-Bell is in the Brady 3 wide receiver now for the Bucks. First down, 10. Ball in the 30-yard line. James Owens tries to find an opening over the right side. I believe that had been Tampa blown Bay dead. They're saying now that Tampa Bay got it back. I thought he was down. Brzezinski was the man who put the hit on James Owens, and Tampa Bay gets a bit of a break. And like you, break, I thought the play was blown dead, but evidently it wasn't, so we'll look at it. Just move to the outside. Good penetration by the, by the defense. Unfortunately, as Owens goes down, pops up the ball, Greg Roberts was there, and there is a pickup of about three yards. I understand we're having a bit of an audio problem from time to time. We're also having a little bit of a video breakup. We apologize for that. And our talented gentlemen are working, trying to correct it. Second down and seven. Oh. And we may have had too much time once again. Uh, maybe even a false move over there. Obviously, is going to work false against start. the Bucks. Number 75, offense. That's what I saw was Dave Revis. Revis over the left side, who, what a story that man. <laughs> he really right. is. What was a story that would bring out nightmares. You know, he's come back against he Harvey retired. Martin. Three days, he only worked out, right? Yeah, he goes against, against Harvey Martin and totally nullifies that great player. Unbelievable. Uh, Revis retired, and then he decided, okay, they had an injury, and they called him. He said, yeah, I'd love to come back. Kind of remarkable, he was waved through the entire league. Nobody claimed him, picked him up. We might have taken a look at that severance pay, too. <laughs> yeah, terrific. I read a little thing today that with the new negotiations, he not only gets an additional $60,000 for money now, but $110,000 for severance pay. I didn't retire you. I can figure that one out. Second and 12, and Wilder. Little gap. Gets
gets back to the original line of scrimmage where it'll be third down and ten. Didn't like that call. Well, the call wasn't so bad. Wilder, I'm sure, would be the first to admit he didn't pick up his knees quite enough and stumbled in, and there was a hole there. He just didn't quite pick it, as we've seen him do on previous jaunts tonight. Can you please tell John and his wife, McKay, and his wife, Corky, in the next booth, I didn't like the call. Well, did you mean to do it or you want to do it? <laughs> well, you've been a social butterfly down here, Coach. You really have, Howard. I mean, you know more people than Zampa. Well, you don't know them well, of course. <laughs> Third down, Tim. You want Stein running? Oh! William buried under a blitz, and once again, the safety blitz produced Michael Stowski, and he was right in the face of Doug Williams. Had no chance. That's one of those really uh, chancy things you take, and I happen to like that kind of defensive football. From a quarterback standpoint, if you get used to looking at the same thing every time, you ought to be able to figure it out. But if you mix it up, throw in a safety blitz every now and then as it is right now, that just makes you think. Because Lasky made it a good move from the outside. Hey, what it did do, it took them out of field goal range, and out comes the punter, Larry Swider. The Vigorito, back at the 10, he'll be guessing the Swider. Pretty accurate is Larry Swider inside the 20. This time off the side of his foot. And they'll bring it out close to the 15-yard line. Well, he's giving him a good call on that. The 15-yard line and that sack moved the Bucks out of position for a field goal. They have to punt. Miami is a first and 10 at their own 20. Magic. You've shown up this evening as you watch the Swashbucklers, the cheerleading unit for the Tampa Bay Bucks. First down and 10, the Miami Dolphins trailing 6-3. to three. Half the football at their own 15-yard line. Both these teams now have gone six quarters without scoring a touchdown since play was resumed following the strike. Don Strzok, now the quarterback, checks off, looks back out to the tight end, Bruce Hardy, and just dumps it out of the field of play. David Woodley, as he did a week ago, ineffective uh, against Buffalo in the first half. He was replaced by Strzok. Strzok, not terribly effective against Buffalo, but they did come away with the 9-7 victory to make them 3-0 in the season. I tell you, Chuck Knox can drive you crazy. The man's a great coach. Yeah, well, it was an under, you know, you had a really very unusual afternoon. Uh, Joe Ferguson intercepted six times to where he was. That doesn't, you're not going to have that very often. Second down and 10. It was Hugh Green uh -huh. all over Eddie Hill. How was it? Leroy Selman, the massive and swift one. You're right. I thought it was Green. That's Leroy Selman in there. 53 instead of 63. Somebody didn't block him. Leroy. Nobody is, touched him. No, everybody's, he's led the team in sacks, but they don't, this doesn't even count. That's just a tackle for him. Yeah. Hugh Green is right in there very close. They all got that one, didn't they? Loss of about four. They move it back to the close to the 11-yard line. Uh, so take another look at Leroy. It's always fun to you know meet these guys that look so big and vicious. But basically, Leroy Summers is one of the most gentle men I've ever met. He's so nice. And... Strzok from the shotgun. Third down, 14. Yeah, that's it. Delay of game. And the offense took too long, and Don Chula. A couple of extra furls on the brow. He does not like that. No, Don doesn't look particularly overjoyed. No. Yeah, they'll back him up five more. This will take it back to the six-yard line. Not terribly effective is Miami on the third down conversions. One of six. Trail only six to three with 7.45 remaining in the third quarter. Now keep in mind, Strzok is not the most agile of quarterbacks. Tampa Bay, however, is showing only a three-man front. No blitz. Inside a handoff. And far short of the first down, Tony Nathan. And Miami will have to punt. Tampa Bay should have fine field position. Barring a fumble. Oros is in. Buccaneer defense is playing with the double V, as John McKay likes to call it. Vim and Bigger. John Hope, second-year man out of West Texas.
Texas State. Waiting to kick it, Tom Morris. Holt standing just about midfield. Morris had to hurry it, and it's not a good kick. Pressure from Morris's right side. Uh, Tampa Bay will have a football. 41-yard line of Miami. I think they may have even touched it closer than that, Frank. They're bringing that ball back around the 37. Somebody did make contact with it. Watch how close this is. Mark mm. Cotney, had he gone for where the ball would have been, he might have got it. You're right, just didn't have the angle. In any event, it'll be first down. Tampa Bay, 38-yard line of Miami. He had to rush the punt. And Tampa Bay has a first and 10 inside the 39-yard line of the Miami Dolphins. 6.53 remaining in the third quarter. 6-3, Tampa over Miami. This is Wilder, right side, gets to the 35-yard line. A gain of about three, three and a half yards. It'll be second down and seven. And once again, we apologize for our audio is what we call backup audio, an emergency operation that we've put into effect. Take a look at the games that these two teams missed during the strike. Tampa Bay missed Detroit, San Francisco, Minnesota, Green Bay twice, Chicago twice, and Baltimore. Their makeup game will be Chicago, and that game January 2nd right here. Second down and seven. Harvard, the rookie from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, up there close to a first down. Big man, 5'11", 220 pounder. That was a big play. And no measurement as we take a look at Jim, Jim Leonard firing in the middle. Jim Leonard has got it right straight head on in there. That's one of those battles you've got to win. He's head up with Bob Baumhauer. That time, give it to Leonard. Picked up some... Good yardage. You know, it's kind of interesting. You see Melvin Carver. He and Michael Morton were teammates out there. The, uh, Nina, where were they? Las Vegas? Nevada, Las Vegas. Yeah, or Reno or someplace like that. First down and 10. 29-yard line. The quick toss goes out to Wilder. And Miami strings it out. But Wilder comes up with a couple. It'll be second down and seven. Miami missed games with Green Bay, Cincinnati, Detroit, New England, Baltimore, the Raiders, San Diego, and Cleveland. Now, that's not a bad miss. No. Their makeup game. game Their makeup game will be against Baltimore in Baltimore January the 2nd. That looks good for Miami in one sense, but might cost Joe Robbie four to $500,000 in another sense. Well, a dollar's a dollar. We did not have too many winners during that course of eight weeks. Second and seven. Inside the 25-yard line. Owens. Oh, good move. Owens breaks the tackle, gets the first down inside the 15, close to the 13. James Owens putting on quite a show tonight, at least from the 20-yard line to the 20-yard line. So then, chewing up the clock, 439 left in the quarter. As you look at the end zone replay, slipping through that. Excellent blocking. Well, that's good running. Yes, indeed. Slipped away from that tackler. Twisted and moved down feet. Now, maybe Doug Williams ought to put this one up before he gets inside the 10. <laughs> yeah, not a bad idea, as a matter of fact. Gives his receivers a little more area in which to work. This is Carver. And Carver just explodes down close to the 8-yard line. Good pickup of six yards. It'll be second down and four. That's an impressive-looking kid, this cop. Yeah, they caught him that time when they had a blitz, maybe even a safety blitz that time. Came in there, and they were able to at least brush him long enough to let Carver move to the inside and pick up a rather sizable game. Getting a lot of visual hits on your on your set at home. Don't worry about it. We're working on it. It has to do with the line between here and Atlanta. We've been told. On second down and four. Carver. Left side and Carver has the first down. It'll be first down goal to go. And Mel Carver has provided a little bit of an extra punch for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They got him as a free agent out of the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Where he spent a couple of years before he transferred to a junior college out there. 
Really good, sound. solid running. They were just plugging the hole, but it was just a little bit late. There was a little opening there in that offensive line. He hit it. All right, and here we are. First down, goal to go once again inside the tent. Doug Williams perhaps did not like the personnel for the play that was sent into him, so he expends the time out. <laughs> Look at Billy Nelson. You can't always do too much about the personnel you got to work with. You got to do the best you can with it. There's Bill Nelson on the left. He's in the short sleeve shirt. He sends the plays in to Doug Williams. We'll be back in a moment. As before, but this is the eighth time they've had that first down goal to go inside the tent. First and goal. Him up. No one is more aware of those numbers than Doug Williams. Williams rolls out. He'll get it in on his own. That's one way to do it. Yeah. Big play for Tampa Bay. And so finally it has happened. The very thing that McKay and the Bucks desperately wanted. A touchdown in the building of a lead. Big man, strong man, Don, and he can run with the football. We've seen him before do it. I, I really am very partial to this particular play down on this area of the field because it does give you that opportunity. If there's nobody open, at least you're going to run with it. You're not going to fumble with that one thing. That time, Williams was able to plug it on in there. The piece adds the extra point. And we have a 13-3 ball game. 3-20 remaining in the third quarter. A must game for Tampa Bay. We'll be back with the kickoff in a moment. And in that drive was Mel Carver, the rookie from the University of Nevada at Las Vegas. Doug Williams taking it in from three yards out. 13-3. 3-20 remaining in the third quarter. Bill Capice to kick off. Colton Walker has dropped for Miami. kick. They'll take it on the field to play by Walker. Flag is down as Walker goes down at the 15-yard line. They are some defensive team, Coach Merritt. They really are, and uh, it's it's fun to see guys play defense like that because they really are they're terrific athletes. You're talking about the Tampa, I hope, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they cover the kicks. Well, it wouldn't be wrong what you said of Miami. Well, no, but I, I think one of the things, you know, you, you look at Tampa's record, Frank, and, it, and, and they really have played well, uh, particularly defensively this year, and they haven't won any ball games. And that's kind of tough. They've got some good players. That Hugh Green, I think, is one of the best. Illegal block, number 54. Receiving team during the return. Steve Potter of the Dolphins. First down, eight yard line of Miami. They trail by ten points. I still don't believe in platoon quarterback. Ron Scott replaced David Woodley at halftime. Vigarito out over the ten yard line. A gain of a couple will be second down and eight. I want to remind you, later tonight on Nightline, a look at the heroin capital of the world, Pakistan, where it's actually sold in the open. Also a talk with Attorney General of the United States, William French Smith, about the U.S. efforts to stem the flow of drugs from that country. That's later tonight on Nightline, following your local news at 11.30 on the West Coast. Second down and eight. John Stock looking it over. Up against the a defensive team against the pass, and he has to put it in the air. That one could have been picked off, deflected, as he tried to get the ball to the tight end, Bruce Hardy. I think it was deflected, probably by Stalls. What you're really going to see anyway, whether it's Stalls or not, you're going to see some pressure. There's Logan, the nose tackle. Stalls is 65. I don't know what. No. Good seat. No, it wasn't Stalls. It was Logan. But getting some good pressure. They sent a linebacker that time, put a little pressure on Strzok. 
Well, they really do put the pressure on the quarterback. Even when they don't get to him, they're pushing those offensive linemen back into his face. Now you got a force that line, defensive line down there. Third down, long yardage. Stop, will overthrow it, it'll be picked off. Cedric Brown playing center field, free safety. There is a flag down, however. Back and Strzok may have been, he may have been bruised up back there. I think he was. I think it's going to be roughing the, be passer. roughing the passer. I didn't see it because I followed the ball. Let's see what this call is. Maybe after the catch. Here's Cedric Brown's run. That's going to be nullified. I do believe. I think it's no, not. It's maybe after right. the catch then. After the catch. Kuchenberg is up there trying to get the inside scoop. There it is from Jerry Seaman. During the return, number 76, yep. intercepting team. Illegal block. There was an illegal block, so it was marked off to the 22-yard line of Miami. 2:19 now remaining in the third quarter. Tampa Bay again threatening. Owens over the left side for about three. It'll be second down and seven. Howard, calling on your experience in covering the boxers and fighters of the world, the real champions. When they have a situation, that's when they put them away. And this is. This is Tampa's chance this to is do their chance stuff. right here. They've got the big one. They're up 13 to 3. You put it 20 to 3, you've got a whole new contest going. But sometimes they don't put them away when they can because they're being cautious. Sometimes they're not champions. Second down, seven. Owens once again. Barnett making the first hit. Owen spinning back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe got a yard out of it. Call it third down and seven. Miami undefeated coming into tonight's game. Washington 4-0, the only other undefeated team. Green Bay, Dallas, New Orleans, 3-1 in that National Football Conference. Pittsburgh, the Jets, Cincinnati, Raiders, and Buffalo are 3-1 in the American. Under pressure, and Williams tried to get it to Wilder. But great pressure on Doug Williams by Ernie Rome. Nobody touched Ernie that time. Ernie Rome just came in, and you know this is this is where you got to sit down and talk to your offensive line or your back. Somebody's got to pick up Ernie Rome. Nobody even touched him in there. That's true. Now that if there's the other situation that could be, all right, if the dog looks up and see Ernie Rome there and the pass he calls, he knows he doesn't have anybody in the backfield to block him. You audible. Right. A little bit different, too. You look at Miami defensive tendencies as you look at Lyle Blackwood going off. They don't uh, blitz Ernie nearly as much as the other three linebackers. But they do put a lot of pressure on you in those third down situations, and that's something that, of course, through the film study right. or whatever Absolutely. you anticipate. Absolutely. That's Lyle Blackwood being assisted off the field. Fourth down on in the huddle now with Tampa Bay is Bill Capice, field goal kicker. Kind of a fun story about Capice, Frank. Capice and uh, David Shula were teammates there in Fort Lauderdale, Lauderdale Don Shula's son. And it was actually Don who says, you come in and work with the, the Dolphins and I think you might be a kicker. Capice. David Shula held the ball for Capice at what, Chaminade yeah. High School in Fort Lauderdale. There in Fort Lauderdale. And, and Capice is a guy, he, I, I read a little thing, he still holds the record in a 100-yard dash at his high school there. So they were great pals and, and teammates there. Pressure's on. The, uh, about a 26-yard attempt. And it's good. The piece now has three field goals on the night. This is 36 yards. That 
looked to be a pretty good job of holding the ball that time. That uh, snap appeared to be a little bit high from that up here. Larry Swider, the punter that got it down in good fashion. All right, Frank, you mentioned teams at 3-1. and one. Here are two of them now, Green Bay against the Jets. Yesterday at Shea Stadium, first quarter, Packers leading 6 to nothing, and Richard Dodd will be looking for the Olympic gold medalist, the speedster, Lamb Jones. Touchdown, that made it 6-all. Both teams missed the extra point conversion attempt. And then with the score tied at 6, Lynn Dickey. Freeman McNeil. That's a different scene. Look at this run, Freeman too. This is a beautiful off run. Right tackle, 36-yard gain. That set up Pat Lay's winning 25-yard field goal. 15-13, the Jets. What I was talking about earlier, Howard, McNeil has given the Jets a dimension they haven't had in a long time. He's good inside. He can take it outside. Capice bangs it, and Fulton Walker awaits the ball at the two for Miami. Walker gets a little opening and gets out over the 30-yard line, upended up to the 32. With 42 seconds remaining in the third quarter, and the Bucks on top, 16 to 3. Time now for Miami to get something happening. Granted, they're working against the number one pass defensive unit in football in the short season thus far here in the NFL. But historically, the Bucks have been strong against the pass. Things are changing in this league, Frank. We'll pick up on that in a moment. Brown Scott remains the quarterback. Fires a short little pass over the middle. Connecting there with the man out of the backfield, Eddie Hill. Gain of about four, second and six. Here's what I mean, Don. Great players like Earl Campbell and Walla Payton have taken a lot of punishment. And along come Marcus Allen, Freeman McNeil, and new stars emerge. It's the nature of the game. And these are two great new stars. It is. As we've said many times, you see the guys that like, particularly Earl Campbell, who's carried the ball so many times in a relatively short career. And you, you just hope that, hey, you know, let's go burn out. But you do have the young legs and the young people that come along. The end of the third quarter, and with the score 16 to 3, it is Tampa Bay over the Dolphins. We'll be the Blackwood brothers, Lyle Blackwood. He, as you can see, has heavily bandaged across the face with his nose, but they are working on his right knee at the moment. Moving over Tampa Bay, and indeed it is a full moon tonight. First for their second down, and seven for the Miami Dolphins. The ball at the 36 yard line, they have had nothing but their problems tonight with a very tough Tampa Bay defense, and they trail 16 to 3. And we will, in our own way, go ahead to the third quarter statistics. And there you see the building up of an edge by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Rushing yards, passing yards, and the three Miami turnovers the key. Time of possession now favoring Tampa Bay. And Miami has had 12 total yards in the third quarter. Very telling. Third down two. Stop. Gets it in, complete to Vigorito. He has the first down up around the 48-yard line. Norris Thomas defensively there for Tampa Bay. This is a hard team to put together a drive against, I'll tell you. Only once tonight, Frank, has Miami really been able to drive with the football. They had that long drive, which they had to settle for three points. Long drive took up about seven minutes and 30 seconds. But since that point, they have been able to do much against Tampa Bay's defense. 13-40 remaining in the game, just underway here in the fourth quarter. Bucks over the Dolphins, 16-3. Stock. And for Cephalo. Oh, oh. Jimmy Cephalo, not the great speed, but he has that knack of getting open. They'll have a first down. Goal to go inside the 10-yard line. Of course he does. He's from Penn State. He's a paterno disciple. Jimmy Cephalo. You're right, Frank. Sometimes he reminds me of George Sauer Jr. in the old days with the 
Jets. There was just a little opening right there in that defense, and that's where Cephalo was, and Strzok laid it right in there. Good you throw. to understand, Mike Washington, good defensive back, giving Cephalo, who does not have the blazing speed, all that area underneath, but he could not get back to deflect or intercept. 43-yard reception, first and goal to go. Vigorito hammered at the line of scrimmage, gets down to about the seven or eight-yard line. Give him a couple. It'll be second down goal to go. Vigorito, good receiver. Seeing a lot of action tonight. Tony Nathan was shaken up, bruised hip on his very first reception of the night. Interesting scene. Yeah, the coach, the quarterback, the coach standing by that quarterback when many thought the quarterback would not develop. Second down, goal to go. see him bobble him like that. Many times we've seen a defensive back pick that off, and if he had, no, nothing would have been in the way. But quick flip out. Receiving is not Franklin's forte. Remember earlier in the game, Don, you were talking about how difficult a ball that is to throw, and you saw what happens if you could put it behind a receiver. Franklin, granted, is not one of your finer receivers in the league. who's had problems with that, but that ball was thrown behind him, and it is very difficult to come up with. It really is. Third down goal to go. See a big Newman there, the right guard. Got a good split looking around. It'll be a pass, and here they come. Strzok. Yeah. In the end zone, we got a touchdown. Joe Rose, the gifted receiving tight end. I tell you, you never count Shula out of anything. Strzok with the big shot to Cephalo. Now finds Rose in the end zone. Miami back in the ballgame. Almost go without saying, but again, he did have time to throw this time. Rose had some time to work. Moved himself in behind the linebackers over the middle. And there he is for six. Point well taken. Strzok had all the time. As Rose did a little dipsy do in the end zone and then finally broke away from the linebacker. It's interesting what they get out of those three tight ends, That's I must right. say. That's right. None of them a household word. Well, you could put them on top of each other and you might not have a Keller Winslow, but as I mentioned earlier, 61 receptions between them a year ago. And Shula plays them like a drum, too. He has them in there in the exact situation in which they fit. Shaman for the conversion. Strzok will place it down. Kuchenberg snaps it back. And now the Bucks have a six-point lead. They trail Dolphins that trail by six with 11.57 remaining in the game. We'll be right back. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with a six-point lead of the Miami Dolphins. Set to receive the kickoff. Michael Morton is back there, number one, and Johnny Ray Smith, number 22. Now, as we look down, it's Mel Carter, along with Johnny Ray Smith. Ron Shaman hammers one again deep into the end zone, and Mel Carter will stay there. Touchback. And it'll be first down and 10, the ball out of the 20-yard line. Flag down up around the 35-yard line. Gary Seaman and his crew will work this one out. Oh, Bradovich in the picture. Every year they write him off. Every year somehow he's around. Makes some key catches. He been plays. around. Came up years ago with the Giants. The seventh-round draft pick out with the 49ers. Flipping indicated against Tampa Bay. Again, college football coming your way this Saturday. Southwestern Conference shootout. Blue Bonnet Bowl bound Arkansas coming off the strong showing against SMU will take on Texas. And that's, well, that's a classic rivalry. Last year, of course, Arkansas knocked off number one ranked Texas, killing their hopes for a national championship. So you'll see it Saturday right here on ABC. Arkansas against Texas. Yes, sir. SMU fortunate to get a tie. Here, let's look at the clip. It's number 
54, Richard Wood, another USC product. Uh, he, he got in there a little late. If they call the penalty on that one, it was for an F to two. Well, that was a good look at Richard Wood. That's right. First and ten. Owens getting to the outside. Getting a couple of yards. It'll be second down and eight. Quickly, the Bucks in trouble. They've got to move the ball now or else Miami gets the position. Good sports fans down here. They have supported this team, supported it for years before they even got it. Yeah, they're trying to get them a baseball team down here now. Oh, they're after it, aren't they? Yeah. This is one after the 30-yard line behind the intended receiver. T-Bell incomplete. You know why that ball was thrown behind him? Because it was thrown late. And he threw to the wrong man. Otherwise, it was perfect. Well, now, Bell was open. But, I mean, he was open just that split second before. And it was just a little hesitancy there on the part of Doug to drill that ball in there. He was open there for, for a moment. Well, it's hard to find them, but the attendance tonight, 65,854. 6,274 no-shows, so that will run our no-shows for the weekend up to about 120,000. For those of you who keep track of that sort of thing. Yeah, folks get busier in the fall. James Wilder, right side, third down and eight in Tampa Bay. Well, they don't want to sag now. That had Bill to be Barnett a... was in there defensively, and Tampa Bay will have to punt. Had to be a call from the sidelines on that one. Right That's there. right, and the fans voiced their displeasure, as you've just heard. And now Miami is in position, or should be, barring a fumble. I think you might have, might have seen John McKay questioning that call coming from Bill Nelson. Well, who knows? Who knows? They do have a good defensive unit, and maybe that's what they're relying on. They haven't given up a touchdown until that last one. Larry Spider. Vigorino is at midfield. He's going to Takes run. it at his 45-yard line. And he'll find that gap if you give it to him. And he gets down to the 42-yard line in Tampa Bay. Ahead by six and a little bit of trouble and a flag is down. He's amazing, that Vigorito. University of Virginia. Yahoo! One of the great educational institutions of this country. He was educated in a different way. The return Illegal the man downfield. Yeah, we saw him return one against the Steelers last year. We sure did. 87 yards. And this year, as I said earlier. Go downfield. Number 30. Kicking team. Oh. Penalty decline. Miami with the Jets. field position declines that penalty. They'll have the ball. First down 10 at Tampa Bay's 42-yard line. We'll be right back with 10-10 remaining in the game. Tampa Bay started it all off. 27-yard field goal by Capice. You can follow it through. 10 Point third quarter for Tampa Bay, but Miami following a 17-yard return of a punt by Tommy Vigorito has a first down and 10, 42-yard line of the Bucks. 10-10, remaining in the game. Franklin, the single setback, struck. Looking downfield. That was Duriel Harris trying to come up with it. Does not do so. Stock got hammered a little bit as he released it. Yeah, I don't know. This is a, a. Let's just take a look and see who comes in there. Oh, Leroy. Leroy Salmon. He was very gentle about that. The Bayou Bullet can't be anybody but Doug Williams, who wants me to say hello to everybody in Zachary, Louisiana. This time by Jeff Toes, moving a little quickly. This is not a typical Miami team. It is, quite frankly, a little ragged. They're getting penalties. They seldom get penalties. The least penalized team over the past two years in the league. They've had two false starts tonight. And they really 
pride themselves in not making those middle errors. And they better pride themselves because Mr. Shula won't stand for it. Second down, 15. Cephalo is there in a fine defensive play. Norris Thomas. Cephalo was open, struck, tried to put it in there with Field instead of zipping it, and it was deflected by Thomas. You know, Frank, I've never understood why Don got rid of Norris Thomas. I think he's terrific. Well, he, he had an explanation for that in the paper. Well, I assume that it's partially true. He, he said that uh, he had a first-round shot at, at McNeil, and McNeil has turned out to be his number one defensive back, and he felt Norris would wind up as being a backup player, and he didn't think Norris was that kind of guy. So he thought he might be more disruptive and positive in his team, so he traded it. Not unreasonable. Third down, 15. From the shotgun. Stock, this time is picked off. Oh. Wide wow. open. Neil Colsey, the other Dolphin who has become a buck. And He's Colsey, love that. back inside the 15-yard line. We see no flags. What a big one. Number one draft choice for the Raiders when in Oakland. Then traveled around and looking him now. What a play. That was your dog about Thomas, and now Colsey's also another one that came out of the, the Dolphin uh, corral, so to speak. And this one was not maybe as gentle as some of the others. Colsey and Chula just didn't get along. Colsey has a tendency to have a more of a free spirit attitude off the field. Chula doesn't like that. He cut him loose. They picked him up as a free agent. And he was here a year before he became a starter when Mark Cutney got hurt in training camp a year ago. Cozy got in there. They have not been able to get him out. Tampa Bay leading 16 to 10. 9.47 remaining in the game. First down, 10. The ball at the 14-yard line of Miami. Carver to the outside. And the big rookie thunders his way down close to the five-yard line. Kozlowski made the stop there for Miami. Plenty of time, but you get the feeling up here that Miami really needed to do something on that particular drive. They had good field position based on Figueroa's return to the punt, and they had a good turnaround. Now it's Miami with the, that old... I agree with you 100%, middle. John. And you said they'd have to rely on their defense, and they did, and they made it work. It was Don Strzok that penalty for moving in the line by Toes forced him into a third and 15 situation. He had to hang it up for the first down. Colsey came up with it. And Tampa Bay threatening again. Second down and one. Ball at the six-yard line. Sanders, Dean Sanders in there for Charlie Hanna. Carver has really pounded uh, Bo Camper. Uh, Bo Camper. Uh, good play by Bo Camper. He I'll tell you, that's the first call really Kim has had tonight. And when he's first reported, as I've mentioned in prior years, from San Jose, top draft choice, Shula said he's the best athlete I've ever had in this camp. Last year, alternated him as a down linesman and a linebacker. This year, totally a down linesman. Don't you think that that might have a little confusion because he's, you know, he's such a good athlete, they really didn't know where to play him. They've used him in both those positions. Well, he went to the Pro Bowl as a linebacker, and then Shula decided they could make a combination linebacker and down lineman on him. Well, what is this? That was, uh, looked like a little confusion coming in from the sidelines again. I wish the coaches would stay out of it. I mean, too many folks out on the field for Tampa Bay. It wasn't Doug's fault. He just had too many people out there with him. Oh, man, you know, the, game, the coaches are supposed to do a good job. They should do a good job. They work hard, prepare the team. When they get out there ready to play, let the players play. Better the timeout than the air. We'll be back. We're back with 838 remaining in the game here at Tampa. The Buccaneers following a 51-yard return of an interception by Neil Cozy. Now are threatening once again. The ball at the six-yard line. Third down. This is Mel Carver. Mel Carver gets the first down. Ridden out of bounds at the two-yard line. Have to give Carver a lot of credit on that. It looked pretty congested on the outside. He just made his cut straight up. Picked up the yardage. He really picks up speed at the right time. Acceleration. Watch this. Hey, here's a 
free agent rookie. That's a bit of a surprise. He's performed well tonight. He's been right hard, as a matter of fact. Played a couple of years, as we mentioned, out of Las Vegas in Nevada. The University of Nevada at Las Vegas. Dropped out of there and went to a junior college. Here he is in the Tampa Bay Buccaneer uniform, putting on quite a show tonight. The great play by Neil Colts. Wilder, such a steady receiver, such a steady runner. A lot of guys in New York and Buffalo happy over this, I'll tell you that. Good effort there. Good effort. And Pittsburgh, too, now. Bill Capice is on for the conversion. Pace splits the uprights to make it 23 to 10. A difficult chore ahead for the Dolphins against a very tough Tampa Bay defense. A turnover, the interception by Neil Colsey when Miami was threatening, down by six points. Colsey brings it back 51 yards and the Bucks take it in. They now lead 23 to 10. Bill Capice to kick off. Fulton Walker is deep. Walker from the goal line. to the 26-yard line, taken there by Nafziger. Eight seventeen remaining in the game. Oh, do they have to operate fast and without a mistake? And against this defense, I question that it's possible. I'm struck. Not so many quarterbacks, but certainly like to have had that last pass back. year in three games played that is they are having a difficult time putting the ball in the air against Tampa Bay the total yards in the air 96 yards for Miami this one the eyes were taken off the football by Tommy Vigorito could have been an intercept too it'll be second down and ten tonight by the Bucks, and yet they're ahead 23 to 10. That was by their opponents, Hard. The Dolphins having turned it over oh, four, four times four tonight. Four. Right. I apologize. Second down and 10. Movement, but no flags. Strzok hits it off. Same play. Back to Vigorito. This time he holds on short of the first down by a couple of yards. It'll be third down and two. A bad offensive call because he was wide open for play before he come back hit it again. Big Rito paid for that, as a matter of fact. I don't think he would have been punished maybe quite as badly had he caught the first one. Did you do that often when you were caught? Yeah, you do. Particularly, you know, you, you work hard to try to find a, a spot in the defense where you think you might be able to work. Just because a, a pass is dropped, you don't leave that spot to come back hit it again. Shotgun. Third and two. Fired in there beautifully to Cephalo, and Cephalo will have the first down near the 42 yard line of Tampa Bay. 7 18, the clock is moving. That was a beautifully thrown ball. That's a real, a really good example of the timing of a pass. Cephalo comes down. Uh, Strzok didn't really wait for him to be open. He threw to where he was going to be open. As soon as Cephalo turns around, the ball is there. And that's just part of getting rid of the ball in a hurry. It's one of the first times as we look down on that play, if you could have watched it from a wide angle, it worked absolutely like it was Draw it a diagram. That's right. There was good protection. And the Bucks for the first time, giving Strzok the time. Cephalo finding the opening spot. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. That's plenty of time to throw the ball. Daryl Harris could not stretch far enough. Quarterback can't ask for more than three seconds to throw the ball. Uh, 
there's some fighters that are designed to go about a 3.2, 3.3, but that's pretty, that's pretty good, pretty close to maximum. Most of the fighters that you're going to throw are going to be thrown in less than three seconds from the time you catch the, you take the snap from the center. And that's why you don't really hesitate back there. You talk about nervous feet for the quarterback. Anytime he starts moving his feet, it just takes that much longer to throw the ball. Second down, 10. Ariel Harris, top of your screen. Rose, the tight end, and Rose gets about six yards to the 36-yard line, where it'll be third down and four. They've got a drive going, but it's kind of one of those stumbling drives. You wait till the third down before they can make their, their first down. And once again, they're in that position. Dave Stalls comes out. In comes Booker Reese, the rookie defensive lineman for the Bucks. Second round draft pick. Third and four. We'll watch it from the end zone. The stock will put it up. The thing you want to look for is that what does this quarterback see coming at him? And he Bigarito was knocked off as he tried to circle around the linebacker. Scott Brantley. Brantley gave him a little hammer. Figueroa was knocked off his feet. Incomplete, it'll be fourth down. And I'm sure that we'll see Strzok going for it. Down 23 to 10. It'll be fourth down and a little less than three for the first. I wonder how many miles Don McKay has paced the sidelines. About a third of Don Coriel, I guess. <laughs> Harrison picked off. Picked off Posey oh, once oh, again. His second interception. He's got to love it. He really wanted this game. Yep. And I'll tell you, Daryl Harris was open. He doesn't that really. ball was thrown behind him. Colsey doesn't really feel too good about his experience in Miami. It uh, may be time, Don. Pardon me? It may be time. I'll tell you, Neil Colsey held the ball up in the air, looked over to the Miami bench, and you can't blame him. He feels good about it. Well, yeah. This, the ball was thrown behind Frank. You're absolutely right. Goals, he happened to be in the right position. Uh, it's one of those things, again, it's just a, a real timing pass. But Neil was in there, good, tough receiver, I mean, uh, defender. And he's got to love that. Two interceptions against his former teammates. First and 10, 44 yard line for Tampa Bay. Now they want to work on the clock. Owens, piled up, gets a yard. across the line of scrimmage defensively there for Miami 450 the clock is moving remaining in the game when you look at this game in perspective Frank it says Joe Robbie the Dolphins owner told me today he said I don't like this game going in they gotta have a win they're a fine football team they've had every tough break they're at home as again you just looked at the hero and, and there's Shula and he said we've won three in a row in this intrastate rivalry take it break. Mel Carver tries to cut it back against the grain, gets three or four yards. It'll be fourth down, and Tampa Bay will have to punt. And Miami's calling timeout right now with four minutes and 12 seconds to go. But when you think of it, Don, Robbie had a point. That's a good point. That's right. That's Who all did you have lunch with today? Who was the group? Joe Robbie and George Steinbrenner. Georgie Porgy. Okay. Monday night football.
football special Thursday edition, 49ers against the Rams. We've told you about that. Walsh and his great team of a year ago now seeking to battle back. They're at one and three, so are the Rams who just beat the Chiefs. Always a great coastal rival. rival. And then Monday night, the Jets, who sometimes look absolutely awesome, loaded with personnel against the Lions, who came a cropper against the Giants by virtue of their own turnovers and mistakes. But still a lot of personnel left. Two good games ahead of us. 4-12 remaining in the game. Bucks trying to get off the snide. Coming into tonight, 3-0, having lost to the Jets, Baltimore, and Buffalo. Tommy Vigorito back at his own 10-yard line, awaiting the punt of Larry Swider. Miami now with two timeouts, stopping the clock at 4-12. defensive effort on the part of the Bucks tonight. They've said it several times. They came in with the best record against the pass in the short season thus far, allowing under 100 yards to their three previous opponents on average. Swider set to kick. Bigarito awaits at the 10. Close. Swider. It's one that will get into the end zone for the touchback. And Miami will have the ball at their 20-yard line, and they trail 23 to 10, with 3.57 remaining in the game. Plenty of time, but it just does not seem that way because they've been so ineffectual. Pretty good rush that time. You saw a near, there's a near block, as they say. Big number, Bo, uh, Kim Bocamp, number 58, was the guy that came in there, I believe. Came close, but not quite close enough. No cigar. But Kay's eating well since he's been down here. Yeah, he's happy down here. It would appear so. Yeah, yeah. Slightly rotund. He like the, the running back. Yeah, or, that's remember. stability for even a young franchise. John McKay lost his first 26 games after coming here. There was no panic. Stock back. First and ten. Looks into the gap of the zone for Cepelo, and it's incomplete. I admire Don Shula a great deal. He has a terrific record. He has a coach, and he's done a lot of things. I really do feel that what he's trying to do right now with Strock and Wooden uh, will not be a, a really success, a successful venture as the year goes along. you got to pick one of them. And if he's going to go with Woodley, he's got to stay with Woodley. A little bit longer than the first half. He's done that the last two weeks, and I just don't think that works. And you just saw it, David, as Don talked about it. Second down and ten. Strock's numbers. He relieved during the second half. Complete. Out to Vigorito. And there is a loss back to the 15-yard line. Andy Hawkins in there defensively. Yet how can you justify it, Don, when Whitley was 7 of 15 for 41 yards in the first half? Well, should change something, shouldn't you? Well, Frank, you know, you might change something, but I mean, that's become the accepted pattern. You know, that's the rule rather than the exception. And, and I really just believe when you go in there and you've got 10 other guys on offense, and, and I just, I, I really believe in a cohesive unit. I think you've got to develop that early, and, you, and whatever you get with it, you go with it. Daryl Harris has the first down unless they rule that he lost it on his own momentum. He did. That's exactly what he Morris did. Morris Thomas was lining it back, and I believe he'll get the first down. They mark it out over the 30-yard line. He'll get it by inches. Let's just take a look. We'll decide what it looks like. Good move by Harris. Coming to the inside. He's got the ball, no question about that. What are you talking about, fumble? I didn't see him fumble. Who said fumble? That's somebody's trying. First down, 10. Stock almost had another one picked up. That was right in and out of the hands of a defender, Andy Hawkins. Hawkins second down, and 10. He's played a good game tonight, Hawkins. He's been in and around. 
around a lot of... Hey, he has. Passes. He took over from uh, David Lewis, traded out to San Diego. August has done a good job. Second down, 10. We have 2.23 remaining in the game. Some of you might wonder why Shula didn't come back to Woodlake. Well, in that case, Don would certainly be right. You go crazy changing your quarterbacks consistently. It's destroyed both players. Scott finds another gap and hits Joe Rose. He'll have another first down out to the 46-yard line. Dolphins with two timeouts. Heading now to the two-minute warning. They'll try and get a playoff before the two-minute warning. I don't think they'll be successful. Are they going to make an attempt? They will not get it off. So they'll have two timeouts remaining, two minutes remaining in the game, and the Dolphins are down 23 to 10. We'll be back in a moment. How many ways can Shearson American Express turn idle cash into working money? I can do it with the financial management account. It unifies your assets so it can keep all your money working all the time. I can do it with today's uncommon values in common stocks. I can reduce your tax burden with tax shelters and tax-exempt bonds. Let us turn your idle cash into working money. Call the flagship of the financial world, Shearson American Express. Joan, where can I find a good stereo for the office? I'll find out. <laughs> Save time and energy. The Bell System Yellow Pages talks when you let your fingers do the walking. Ava, complete line of office supplies. Sam Stereo. Doctor? Sam Stereo. Sensational sounds abound. That's remarkable. No, it's sensational. I'm Sam. Get the Yellow Pages talking. Sensational. Let your fingers do the walking. Two minutes remaining from Tampa. The Tampa, Tampa Buccaneers, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, looking as though they will get their first victory of the season, staying alive in the nine-game season that we have coming up with eight teams from each conference going into sort of a basketball tournament, if you will, to determine the Super Bowl opponents. We all just saw Don Shula. He has been on successful since the merger in defeating NFC teams. What you're seeing here is a rare defeat. Hey, he's been uncommonly successful defeating everyone. That is true, but he was a great standard bearer and still is for the AFC. First down and ten. The Dolphins have two timeouts. Pressure on Strzok. Gets it off and Joe Rose. On those rare occasions, he doesn't hold on. It'll be second down at 10. That's what I was talking about. Look at that record. Did you go down and type that up before the game? No. We'll tell you, we've got a staff down there in that truck, haven't we? I just know my staff. <laughs> you do. I mean, man, you talk about a man who knows something. On top of it. He's got it. Dallas has been very good, too. If they played every game on Monday nights. <laughs> Stock looks it over from the shotgun. Second down, 10, 156 remaining in the game. Stock looking into the middle and in and out of the hands of Matt Moore. That's two drop passes. You, you saw Moore. one drop by Rose, then you won by Moore. Hard to believe. Yes, let me interrupt you real quickly to let you know that this telecast, uh, you know, that we're seeing right here right now. It's presented by the authority, the authority, I say, of the National Football League. It is intended for the private use of our audience. So any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the expressed written consent of the National Football League is prohibited. You've got to check with the, with the league before you can do most anything these days. 149. Third down, 10. From the shotgun once again. Strzok timed it out perfectly with Joe Rose. First down, 42-yard line. You know, as an example, I've always wondered why they're going to prevent defenses when they've been holding them all night. That's 
send everybody in to throw the kitchen sink at Strzok if I was out there. They don't send three guys trying to rush him and drop everybody else back. Inside 130 remaining in the game. First down 10. Strzok quickly over the middle. Figueredo. Figueredo trying to get out of bounds, which he should do if he can. And he doesn't. The clock will continue to move. He may have picked up a first, though. I love to About a yard short of the first. He is. Somebody is shaken up. Frank, I love to watch him run. He is so elusive. You think they, they've caught him, and no, he still goes. Didn't you tell me he was kind of the, the contributing factor in their opening day victory over the Jets? 59-yard punt return for a touchdown. Figueroa did the game open. He's still down on the turf, as is Hugh Green. Now Hugh Green is up, and Vigorito remains. That figures. And the clock has been stopped for the measurement. Vigorito shaken up on the sidelines, trying to get out of bounds. Coming up, up a foot short of the first down. play in the huddle. They are ready to line up, get the ball snapped with 109. Because as soon as those sticks are put on the sideline, Jerry Seaman will start the clock. For Miami, next Sunday, they'll take on Minnesota in the Orange Bowl. For Tampa Bay, next Sunday, they'll be in New Orleans. Run down their remaining games for you in a moment. Two teams that had big victories this past week. Minnesota sure looks sharp against the Bears. Nobody Clock has it. started. Second down in inches. Strzok connects down the sideline to Seplo. He promptly steps out of bounds, stops the clock with 59 seconds, the ball at the 19-yard line. Strzok knows he needs a couple of scores. So one might anticipate he will put it into the end zone on the next play. He has 59 seconds, two timeouts. Then, of course, we'd see the onside kick. All speculation, of course. But I like he has to be thinking that way. Yeah, I, I, I love the way your mind works. Here. Frank is into this game. He understands all of that. That's good. <laughs> he's in the facts. Wise guy. You know he's in the facts. On first down, stop. Rich Diana, the rookie from Yale. I wish we had seen more of him. Hey, he had some record up there, didn't he, the Ivy League? Average 187 yards per game as a senior. There's the shot, and it's complete. Joe Rose. End zone, 34 seconds on the scoreboard clock. There's your prevent defense. It's just amazing. They've got to have two touchdowns to beat you. So Joe Rose keeps Miami's hopes alive. He's standing back there. Nobody's even close to him. Wide open. They don't quit, do they? Well, there's not anything really very dramatic about that. So they just, you know, get off on the snap and go down there and turn around in the end zone and they'll throw it to you. Strike will place it down. seconds remaining on the clock and two timeouts remaining. They need a touchdown. Uh, first, they need to recover the onside kick and a touchdown and a conversion to pull this one out. And while they get lined up, everyone but Dortha Shula will be going for this football. I can tell you this ABC Sports exclusive has been brought to you by the Buick Motor Division and your Buick dealer who proudly announced the 1983 Buicks. Considering the impressive choice of automobiles they offer you, wouldn't you really rather have a Buick? And by light beer from Miller, everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. Well, Von Schaumann, like all kickers, practices a great deal. He's a right-footed kicker. And that would mean that he could probably kick at the required distance of 10 yards before it can be recovered better to his left than he could his right. And this 
you look down on the field, you see a lot of sure-handed receiver types on the kickoff team. They employ them anytime they go with the onside kick. 34 seconds. Miami with two timeouts. Bucks leading 23-17. football, I believe. Yes, they do. Don't you love it? <laughs> Two timeouts in 30 seconds, and coming up with it was Glenn Blackwood. And Tampa Bay is about to snatch defeat out of the jaws of victory. Knocked away. Cephalo saying he was interfered with. And no flags. John Holt with a fine defensive play for Tampa Bay. Down to 23 seconds. Three guys rushing the passer. John Holt does a good job. Good on the outside. Play. That's nice defensive play. The man also open was Joe Rose, who has that uncanny knack for finding the opening across the middle. There he is. Big bend formation out to the right. Screen. Diana, the rookie from Yale, gets the first down at the 40-yard line. Seconds ticking off. Stopped at 12 as Don Strzok uses one of the two remaining timeouts. The one would speculate, figuring six to seven seconds of play. Miami has a pair to come. executive producer of ABC Sports. Of course, is Ren Arley. ABC's Monday Night Football is produced by Bob Goodrich and directed tonight by Craig Janoff. Fine job, to Craig. Technical director, Joe Chavo. Our associate director, Jack Graham. Technical manager, Coach Coltrane. Unit manager, Herman Morris. Telecommunication manager, Frank Adamo. Assistant to the producer, John McGinnis and Kim Pelton. Stats and research by Peter Rucco, our spotter from Hall of Fame'sville, Canton, Ohio, Steve Bazzica. To the end. Shula calling Strzok over, keeping composed, knowing what he's about, knows he has little, if any, chance, but still giving it all. And on the other side, John McKay, so old and so wise in this business, counting on nothing. Too many shots in the back. One timeout remaining for Miami. Going deep. Picked off. Picked off deep by Mike Washington. That's two for him. Two for right. Colson. Two for the seven-year veteran from Alabama. And two for Colsey. And that finally did it. Time has expired. And Tampa Bay has won their first game of the short season thus far. And another look at Daryl Harris. Sprinting towards the end zone. Ball thrown slightly behind. Washington playing the ball all the way. No interference there. Look at it from the reverse angle. Mike Washington having great position all the way. Eye on the ball. Playing the ball right here. If anything, getting out of the way of Gurriel Harris. And the Bucks have recorded their first win and for Miami, their first loss. And the Washington Redskins remain the NFL's only undefeated team. We'll be back. Now, from Buick and your participants. Here's 23 to Miami Dolphins 17. Remember, stay tuned for ABC News Nightline after your local news, 1130 on the West Coast, over most of these ABC stations. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. That's what friendly skies are all about. Learning about.